Kick Out Crew. James L. Corai. Brad Stanton. Coach Rosie. Adam from Bam. Mike Whitaker. Devin Dowling. The Kick Out Crew Podcast. Available on all major podcast platforms. And watch videos exclusively on YouTube. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 26. My God, we made it half a year. And, uh, you know, what a fun 26 uh, episode ride it's been. We want to thank everybody for uh, their loyal support and, uh, you know, those who've been with us since episode one till episode now, it's only going to get better, I would assume, <laughs> you know. But, uh, well, last week's, uh, you know, Halloween Havoc episode number one had really good feedback. You know, I love Halloween, so I figured I would uh, don the attire just to show my spirit of Halloween because got a lot of fight, <laughs> a lot of feedback on that one. So I wanted to tell people that, damn, I just fucking love Halloween so much. And uh, that's enough about me rambling. Uh, I'm going to kick it on over to brad so uh brad take it away so i got a little story for everybody last uh friday so friday um so for this when this episode drops it'll be two weeks but i took my son i was getting ready to take my son to get his license he's had his permit seven months in pennsylvania you got to have your permit six months of driving and then you can go get your license so he's been going seven needed said he needed the extra month for practice no problem so his appointment is for 3 30 in the afternoon we're about 20 minutes away from the place that does it it is a quarter to three, and he comes running down the stairs and says to me, Dad, I can't find my permit. And I'm like, um, I'm looking at the list of stuff you need, and I've also taken my daughter to do this before, too. Permit is number one on the list. Uh, you definitely need your permit. The 65 hours of bullshit that you say you have to drive with your son to have signed off, they actually don't even need that. So just so you guys know in the future, if you're in Pennsylvania, that's just a way to get you to practice. But you know what? Go ahead and practice, because we want safe drivers on the road, okay? So... Uh, he doesn't have his permit. So I said, all right, well, when was the last time we drove? For me and him, it was like a week ago. And I said, you had it then? He goes, yeah. I go, what about at your mom's house? Because uh, as you know, I'm remarried and uh, my ex-wife does, doesn't live here with us. <laughs> so they, um, so he goes, yeah, we did drive on Wednesday and it might be there. I go, where is it? He goes, it's in my wallet. I go, where's your wallet? I go, so you lost your wallet? He goes, yes. So he calls his mom. She only lives a few minutes away. We head on over. He's tight. And then he gets there and he can't find it. She prints him out how to get your duplicate permit. I'm like, well, this is a little late to the party. All right. I mean, can we look in the house for five minutes before we, we apply for duplicates? Cause I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. This place closes at four 15. And if you know anything about the DMV, they close at four 15 and they don't close a minute later. So anyway, he can't find it. So I'm like, all right, listen, I've been to the DMV before. And one thing I know is no one there is prepared. Barely anybody even speaks English when they go up. There's a real lack of communication between who's working there and the people there. So I'm like, you know, it, it, it could be a lot worse. So we get there. Usually you, if you're for your driver's test, you just get right in line with your car. You don't even have to go in. Well, we don't have a permit. So we have to go in. You wait in that line. You know, it's 323 at the time. Again, our appointment's at 330. Uh, we finally get picked. They said, yeah, you got to just fill this out and take it over there. I'm like, okay, great. But still, it's 15, it took 15 minutes and we did get the duplicate permit. And they're like, just get in line. So we're in line and uh, the guy comes up to our window, kind of just knocks, you know. And I said, yeah, I, we rolled down the window and he goes, what time's your appointment? We said, 3.30. He goes, uh-huh, 3.51, pal. I said, yeah, I know, we're, uh, we're sorry, we're a little late, sir. He goes, name? And I tell you, you know, my, my name is, yeah, his name's Frank, Frank Stanton. He goes, Frank Stanton? Hm. I don't got a Frank Stanton on this list. You're at the wrong place. I said, well, I, I don't know of any other place, sir. Uh, this is the only place I've ever come before. He goes, 
Well, there's plenty of places to go, and you're not on the list. So get out of line because we're getting ready to close. I'm like, oh, great. I'm, me and my son are having this freaking terrible moment as before this anyway because he didn't have his permit. And I'm fired up anyway. And then now it's my fault, right? So then we're getting ready to pull out of line, and the guy goes, hold up, hold up. <laughs> my computer was frozen. Give me that name again. And I gave it to him again. He goes, okay, you're on the list. I'm like, oh, thank you freaking god all right so i get out of the car and then the guy stands outside of the car and he tells frank's he, he starts telling him what to do with the controls he goes all right turn on your lights not doing it he's like turn on your lights he's not doing it and then frank i hear him yell out the window they're on auto oh, oh boy <laughs> oh boy and then he goes no turn them on i don't care if they're on auto you got to know how to turn on your lights well he figures it out then he goes now turn on your high beams once again, this isn't, this is not going well. Okay. This is not going well. Good education, so, dad. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been driving seven months and this is all on me at this point. I'm like, this is not going good. I'm texting his mom. I'm texting my wife. I don't see this happening. So then they take off in the car. I don't see what happens with the uh, parallel park, but I think it went okay. And he was pretty good at that. Then they are leaving the parking lot and he's making a left. Now it feels like this left turn is taking about 45 minutes. I'm watching him. Turn left for 45 minutes. It, I don't know what he was doing. There's not that many cars coming in. So I'm waiting a few minutes and I see them pull back in. Finally getting a little bit closer to me and he just locks eyes with me and he goes, and he's shaking his head. Nope. I'm like, ah, oh. so he failed. So I text his mom. I text my wife. He didn't pass. He pulls into the parking spot. The guy comes out of the car and he goes up to the window and he is reading him the riot act about everything he's doing wrong. So I'm like, all right, I got to go rescue this kid. So I'm going walking up and he's just telling him, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. He goes, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and grant you a junior driver's license. Me and him are just like, have that moment of like, lock eyes, like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I thought he got told he failed when he's like, just not shaking his head at me when he was what, parking in the spot. So anyway, he passed <laughs> after all that Frank. this two hours of complete stress he passed the test so i, I well, don't you, uh you kill these episodes man you open with like the bald hair thing then you locked in a bar standing up pissing drunk crazy now you got this you uh, and the thing oh, he's is, got something. <laughs> and I wish I could tell you that story was a little bit exaggerated, but that is that is exactly how the whole damn thing went down. I thought, I, I can't believe the guy passed him. It was that moment of like license to drive. I don't know if you guys remember that movie from the 80s and 90s or 90s where he, he didn't have to take the test because his twin sister passed the test. They passed him because the computers went down. You know, it was like that moment. Like, oh yeah, sure. Since your sister's smart, you can go ahead and have your license too. <laughs> but uh, that's my, uh, that was my story of the week. Back to you, James. <laughs> well, uh, how do you follow that one? <laughs> but, you know, I love, uh, you know, good family stuff with Brad. I told you to call him like, well, good job, Dad. And then he ends up passing. So uh, foot in mouth on my part. <laughs> Sweet stone cold <laughs> beer, by the way, for those yeah. watching on video. Doesn't taste too good right now. A little under the weather, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power through. Yeah, boy. Don't, you know, kick out. Like, you know, that's what We're we do. All, week. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Brad. And uh, Mike, you know, it's your turn. See you bobbing and weaving over there. What's up? What's happening? Why not? Well, you know what? <laughs> to follow Brad's story, I got my license the first time in Pennsylvania when I was in Pennsylvania. What? So you were talking about like the driving permit and everything else. 90% of the time I was driving with my permit. If I had it, somebody with me, he wasn't a licensed driver. So like all my stuff, I just forwards on there. And a lot of times I was driving, like sometimes I drove without nobody in there. Just fuck it. Why not? Right. <laughs> the day I got my license driving home, guess what happened to me? I got pulled over. Just, Hey, you got your license? Yes, sir. Right here. <laughs> He's like, you just got these today? I said, yes, sir. He's like, didn't I? I said, no, sir, you did not. It was a small town. So he seen me around a couple of times. He's like, well, I can't stop you now. You got it. 
<laughs> so that, that's my Pennsylvania. But uh, what part, what part of Pennsylvania that week, was that, Mike? Uh, Forest City. Okay. Somewhere by Carbondale, Scranton area. Okay. That's a couple hours Up from there. there. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I got it. But uh, this week went good. Uh, viewed this in last week's episode. My daughter is now in speech therapy. So <laughs> don't put trouble <laughs> for that. And, no more uh, last name screw ups. No more last name screw ups and getting in trouble for that. So that's I watched the video of that probably four <laughs> times because Brad's like. <laughs> and, uh, and my son made the wrestling team. Hell yeah. And so he got on the wrestling team. So congratulations to him. So a couple of little good things happened this week. You know, Mike, I look, I don't laugh at myself too much, but when I listen to that episode back and I hear myself say, thank God. <laughs> I did laugh do it on video. Life. You're just like, and then like he says it, and you go, <laughs> and stands on head. Thank God. I thought it was funny. We don't know what we're gonna say, guys. <laughs> the folks at home, we don't know. So I think that it proved it. <laughs> but yeah. So um, we had to get a little week here. So everything's getting lined up and going good. Awesome. Glad to hear. I guess that's it, James. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's all I got. got it. <laughs> well, hell yeah. You know, and uh, what better way to uh, swing it on over to some spooky times than uh, Brad? Go ahead and explain again how we all just fucking love Halloween. You know, some of us dress the part. Wow, I can't believe you guys hate Halloween so much. Me and Adam. I'm Jehovah's you know, Witness. I'm dressed I'm Jehovah's up as Witness. Uh, <laughs> I can't celebrate it. <laughs> But yeah, Brad, let's go ahead and uh, you know take a I'm walk in the great. Oh God, in that fucking... I'm dressed up as an honorary ooze. I'm not really sure who's not dressed for Halloween. Oh, so you mean that that <laughs> shirt is fake? Meaning an ooze? Is that what you're saying? Because I know that the person on it is a fake ooze. That's right. So I'm a fake fake ooze. Anyway, this week, yes, you heard it right. We're gonna do our second week of Halloween havoc matches Woo! because of it being Halloween season. Uh, I think we'll probably have one more after this, guys. Does that sound about right? More than likely. Yep. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> well, I think at this wait. point, we can call it a series. Oh, yeah. shoot me. We better have a fucking gobble gobble series. That's all I'm saying. It's my well, birthday month. Who gives a fuck about October? If you want to go ahead and listen to part two of the series before part one, I think you'll be safe in this one. <laughs> You don't worry about our part four of the women's series. Okay, we gotta wait. I gotta go back to one. <laughs> oh, see what these guys had to say. But anyway, about yes, that's, three. What we, that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be talking about two Halloween Havoc matches. So I will go ahead and kick it back to you, James. Well, uh, you know, uh, can't wait. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> can't wait to talk about this, but I got all choked up because I was thinking, man, this first match that we're watching from the old school, uh, you know, 89-ish era, is uh, a lot better than that fucking absolute trash we had to watch last week. So I want to give Adam Simmons another shout out. Great fucking match, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you still hold your guns on that one. Hey, uh, good thanks, shit. Adam. Thanks a lot, Adam. And there's your mention. <laughs> but uh, let's kick it off. You know, the only way we can with Lex Luger versus Brian Pillman. It is a NWA US title match from Halloween Havoc, 1989, which took place. October 28th, save that date, October 28th, 1989, from the Philadelphia Civic Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Nothing really? against, oh, I mean, uh, the <laughs> Philadelphia Civic Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Die Eagles die, every day. <laughs> die Eagles die on the road to victory. Boom, roasted. Big week, big week. Yeah. We already know. We already hey, know by now. Man, by the time this airs, we're gonna sound stupid. <laughs> Congratulations, Eagles, six and zero. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Hurts killed it. Oh, Before fucking Jack, eat Jack it. Didn't Cooper Rush. Who would have thought a backup would fucking smash their ass? You know, I'm great. You know, crazy stuff. Seven sacks. <laughs> yeah, Michael Parsons, awesome. <laughs> that, that was the dumbest <laughs> three to three tie I've ever watched. <laughs> I hate tie football games. Right, I do too. Had an attendance of seven thousand three hundred. <laughs> Match length of a little under seventeen minutes, and uh, boy howdy, another three and a quarter star. You know, 
from Meltzer. Good stuff. I even know who the commentators are for this one, too. By the way, hold up. We messaged Meltzer today. I did. And uh, Devin also wanted to know. He has not gotten back to you. So what he found <laughs> that to be a four and three quarter match. I did not insult him. I just said, let me ask you a question. Do you still feel this way? I, I, does it still hold up today? I have not heard back. <laughs> it, I think uh, I might. It does it, not. It did not hold up then. Well, I know one Apparently person. Apparently, your, comment, your comment must not have been five stars, or he didn't. Or he would have replied to it. Boom. <laughs> I know one guy that fanboys to it, so it's probably fucking seven stars in the Tokyo Dome on him. <laughs> but enough about that, Brad. Or wait, actually, we got to go to Adam for this build. <laughs> so Adam, <laughs> how did actually, we get they, here? There's really not much build up for this. I looked on a couple of different websites. My man. And the only thing I can say, basically, uh, this one reporter says, I, I just get the feeling that Pillman was a bright newcomer because I think this was his second year. I think Luger was in his third year. Um, just a bright newcomer. They could put him against uh, one of the top heels, give him a shot at a major title and see how it goes. And this actually ends up being the best match of the pay-per-view, in my opinion. I mean, I think it's actually one of the top five Halloween Havoc matches ever. Wow. Obviously I behind agree. Eddie and uh, Ray, huh? Oh, yeah. And this is Luger. <laughs> it's actually Luger's a, a decent match by Luger, considering he's only three years into it. Um, but, I, I mean, it's so all, I think it's all Pillman. Pillman makes him look hey, like a I was about to say, I know we're going to get to that, but I would say it's uh, more Brian than old Lexi. Right we are here. definitely going to get to that, but I, I'm, I, I don't know if I agree with everything there, but okay. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> You'll just have to stay tuned to hear these comments. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, anyway, I just rewatched the match a few minutes ago, actually, to see if there was anything I missed. But uh, so the first thing I, I wanted to say, though, is uh, this varsity blonde type entrance. What did you think of that, uh, Devin? Oh, I liked it. By, Coming by down with all the with all the cheerleaders, you know, they were wearing like Sluger's colors, but I guess that doesn't matter. But I still had all the cheerleaders run down beside him as he sprinting into the ring. Oh, I thought it brought a lot of energy to the match or to the like intro. Do you think they paid a little less attention to that? Like, hey, that's their colors, that's our colors kind of thing back in 89. Uh uh, coach. <laughs> what the, are you referencing older people because you don't know? Is no, that what you just what I meant did? Is well, I don't have experience. You made it, you're the one that made it clear <laughs> that it was Lex Luger's uh, colors. But no well, big deal. Like they I, were wearing I, purple and yellow. I couldn't like, tell you what color they were wearing, honestly. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I didn't, I didn't get that in depth. No. I'm going to tell know. Erica that you're checking out the cheerleaders' outfits. So I didn't even know what outfits they were wearing. Catch it. There it is. In depth. Yeah, shout they out were, to They were wearing clothes. I didn't even know if they were wearing clothes. <laughs> was that Pillman's uh, original theme or is that like a network dub over thing? Coach? I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't, I, yeah, I don't remember that. Because I mean, I was like, "Damn, this is a good theme," but no, my luck, it's probably like you know, studio composition B on the free to use fucking music stuff. Yeah. So it was NWO, right? I think as long as they, yeah. it was under thirty seconds, they're allowed to use it. But I, I don't know how that works. So. Well, then, a, shit a lot of women time. can use me then if I'm free for under thirty. Hey. <laughs> hey so Mike, uh, let, let's talk about the mullet here of. Uh, Cause you're a mullet guy, right? What is that? A top ten mullet by by uh, Pillman? It's definitely a good one. Uh, that's I a top it, uh, five. What are you talking about? Oh I God, forget I leave the other southern guy out. Four and a half star. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you said mullet because it was southern. In my head, I was like, Brad just made a oh, southern. Joke. All right, so Devin. Then when Adam, Adam chimed in, in, you were like, "Oh, the other southern guy." You had bad so intentions, sir. That's okay yeah. from Devin, but I can't call southern yeah, guy. Name mullet. five more mullets better than Pillman's. Pillman well, I'm gonna go. Eddie Joe Girl. Joe Dirt had the best of all time. <laughs> Wasn't even real. Yeah. So yeah. Pillman Jr.'s got a rocking one. I ain't gonna lie. Mike Kyoto probably had the best mullet other than Brian Pillman. <laughs> you just helped us on your own cause, but <laughs> don't break my heart, my achy breaky heart. That was pretty good, huh? Oh, were you were you too busy drinking fucking, you know, drinking and passing out in bars when that song is popular? <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back <laughs> to the show. All right, so the crowd is really into this Pillman character, don't you think, James? You know, actually, I do, and it's, it's kind of cool to actually talk about a crowd, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But, you know, I uh, <laughs> I definitely enjoyed, you know, 
a crowd atmosphere at this match. And I'm what like back in that day, and I know this is way off the subject, but could uh they couldn't hear the announcers, right? Or could they hear the announcers? I don't on think the loud the on the loud system. I don't think so. Oh, because they were uh, you know, then that means that even without any context or any uh play by play type stuff, the crowd was uh, I thought they were going for it. Obviously, they booed the shit out of a uh, Luger and cheered Pillman at the entrance. Do you think so? Because coach, I thought that guy, I thought Luger kind of got a baby face pop there. What did you think? I thought well, they booed the his ultimate, ass when he, out. he was the ultimate heel during this time. Uh, people always have loved Lex Luger. Either you loved him or you hate him. And you said the match was in Philadelphia, right? Yeah. And isn't that a heel town? Absolutely. You know, so, Ain't that the fucking truth? Sorry. You know, uh, I was very proud of Philadelphia and what they did for Bray Wyatt the other night, you know, because they, uh, John Alba said that pop was one of the biggest pops he's heard. And he's covered Super Bowls, uh, NCAA Final Four. And that was the biggest pop he's ever heard. Good job, Philly. Yeah, it's definitely a heel town for sure. We, I mean, listen, they should never, they should never, ha- I mean, this is going off base a little bit. They should never have another Royal Rumble there if they're going to have an obvious baby face winner. Because we will ruin him. We will ruin, we ruin Roman Reigns. We ruin Batista. If we see obviousness in the in the finish, you're out of here because we're not having it. You can make fun of Philly for that, but I think you got to respect them a little bit too, because they all they had to do that year was leave Daniel Bryan in it for till the end. And it wouldn't have mattered. It was the obviousness, and they want the heel to be in it. That's all. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, JR. <laughs> So this part really made me laugh here, and I don't have a question for anybody in this, but JR giving all the highlights of Luger. Well, you know, he's the youngest football player, and he played for seven years. Well, you know, you know, Brian, Brian's lost about 20 pounds. He wrestles now with 20 pounds lighter. That's why he may look a little different to see his football highlights. But, you know, Luger, Luger, uh, you know, he quit school, went to the Canadian Football League. Like, yeah, dude, he just goes down, like, everything. That's all he had to talk about. Yeah, it's not like right. Luger had a bunch of wrestling highlights to talk about. So talk about the <laughs> it reminds me of what The Undertaker said when he found out that JR was coming to WWF. He said, he better not talk about my basketball career. I mean, the guy's <laughs> supposed to be dead in a coffin. He's going to talk about my highlights in my high school <laughs> senior year. But he that, still that does a, it now. He does do it now. He can't help himself. He can't help it, Mike. <laughs> well, because it provides realism, guy. If, you know, if they believe they're a real athlete, and it, gives them, it validates them. Yeah. Well, really let me ask different. Devin. As an old guy, I love hearing that. What do you guys <laughs> think about uh, hearing the guy's athletic career? And it's not because I'm a coach. I just like hearing their their background, what, what they were before they were a wrestler. Do, are young guys into that? Yeah, I mean, I like it. Like, just it, it does. Like, it adds background text, like, to the guy. Like, uh, if, if you can tell us that he's won a bunch of championships and stuff for whatever school – Obviously, people that know that school and root for that school are going to like that. And like that sport, people are going to like that. So, I appreciate that in JR. And like we've heard Corey Graves do it here and there, too. Well, you got to admit, I mean, in this situation, you just have two guys, regular guys going yeah. in there. You don't, have, you don't have the dead man going in there. <laughs> yeah. And like, it's different. These guys I, I are, like it every now and then, but it seems like JR would do it, like, all the time. He loves he it. it with he loves his sports. He loves his football. He loves his sports. <laughs> I so think he's, he sparingly used it, though, I guess, like with the names and stuff. Because it's not like, like you know, you say you can't be like, oh, here's the dead man. By the way, in Texas, he's playing like basketball. You know, I think. Uh, but as kayfabe's, you know, gone out the window, maybe he can get away with it more in AEW. Like, well, you, it would have been really funny with Kane. Uh, I mean, the whole, <laughs> whole backstory of Kane being burned up and everything and then talking about his freaking soccer career. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been that would have been tremendous. They should do some spoof of this, but. So there's a slow start to the match, but there's some good punches. Uh, Luger definitely working like a heel, very methodical. Uh, Pillman attacks Luger, a chop, then a ton of chops by Pillman up and over uh, the rope. Pillman coming off the rope, but Luger moves, slows it down. Adam, do you think that uh, do you think that um, Luger is playing a good heel here and playing to the crowd and keeping things uh, under control? I think he's trying to. I mean, it's, it's not like he has a lot more experience than Pillman, but from what he's learned, and I guess by that point, he's doing his best. I mean, 89, the crowd actually believed everything was legit real because you had old ladies with canes chasing people around. I mean, Lex Luger wasn't no Arn Anderson, but it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. Then again, he um, crossbody uh, by Pillman. Uh, good arm drags by Pillman also into a submission by Pillman. Cheerleaders in the crowd. Did you think this was a nice uh, touch uh, 
Devin? The cheerleaders running around the crowd? <laughs> yeah, they're pumping up the crowd. I like that. They're trying to get a film in, film in chant. It was fun. A lot of drop kicks and arm drags by Pillman. James, you think he needed a little more in his arsenal at this point? At, uh, well, maybe at that point, I guess that's kind of, you know, that's flying Brian-esque, but I don't yeah. know. I would say, obviously, as time goes on, we, we get accustomed to stuff, you know, but back in that time, they were popping for, you know, some of the craziest stuff, like drop kicks, you know, uh, false finishes were, like, really big back then. But I will say... Uh, talking about the cheerleaders, they did that random cutaway to the cheerleaders, like walking back up the ramp. I thought that was a bit ridiculous. <laughs> just in my opinion. Like it, hey, there's this match going on, and bam, we're gonna cut to these two cheerleaders just like walking up the ramp, like ha ha, like jostling with the crowd, you know, laughing and stuff. And then it just goes right back to the match. But yeah, they, they even cut to them in the crowd a couple times. The the thing with Pillman doing a bunch of drop kicks and arm drags when you're learning. When your first year or two training, the there is a uh, a little bit peek behind the curtain. There is a formula that they teach you. What you get? What? What? You you there, never peek behind the curtain. <laughs> Tell me about reversing the figure four. <laughs> well, that's later on. I'm talking about when you're first training. That's later on. But uh, when you're first starting to train, your first year or two. Uh, you, you, do, you, you do your front rolls and everything. You learn your awareness in the ring. But the start, one of the starting formulas that they'll teach you is hip toss, arm drag, drop kick. Like hip toss, arm drag, and then back body drop, drop kick, and then powder. Or get out of the ring. There you, there's another one. But that's like the basic formula for what they teach you. And since this is his second year in, in, in wrestling, that's probably a lot of what he's learned. And some of the easier stuff to make to make it look like a good match. So that's like the basic basic formula for a new trainee. You know, hip toss, lock up, hip toss, arm drag, drop kick, uh, go out. So that's probably why he did a lot of that because he he was still training back then. That makes sense. Hey, coach, uh, what do you think of Lex's superiority complex? I loved it. You know, he's clapping for himself. He's avoiding some of the moves. He just had an air of of uh, superiority here. And as uh, experienced wrestling fans, when you see that, you know that that person's gonna lose. So unfortunately, that was a clue to me. I didn't pick it up in 89, but now that I'm a little bit more experienced, um, he was, he was uh, really shaming uh, Flying Brian, you know, uh, moving out of his ways, chopping him, clapping for himself. Uh, this was a, a the, dictionary definition of what old school matches were you know like adam was saying with the arm drags and the drop kicks and everything you know Devin, you saw what uh, a five-star match was that people are complaining about today that's the way that these old people want to have the matches they don't like to flip flop and fly i like all that kind of stuff but the the, the purists would say that this match was right on par with what they want to see today so I see a Lex loser sign, Mike. What sign did you ever bring with you that was uh, – any funny signs you ever brought to the show? I brought a big, sexy Kevin Nash sign one time. That was a funny oh, – you, you, you did that? <laughs> I really did, yes. So if there's ever an F. Mary Kill and uh, Big Sexy's in it, he's your F, huh? He's my man. 11 soft, buddy. 11 soft. Hey, we have a, we have a listener yeah. named Bobby. I think, he, I think he would legit make love to Kevin Nash like – you know, F. Mary Kill, he would, it would be Kevin Nash, all of them for him. Yeah, StarCast 5, that's all they talked about was, I, I got to go to, I got to meet, I got to meet Kevin Nash, got to go to Kevin Nash's table, got to go to Kevin Nash's table. If I got a dollar for every time he said Kevin Nash, I'd be rich <laughs> and I'd be running Podcast One or something. <laughs> Bobby's a hell of a nice guy, but I can't even see him standing next to him. And you <laughs> either, Mike. He would have to, like, oh, pat I him on the head and his kneecaps, like, oh, here's Bobby. Like <laughs> Bobby favors my stepdad so much, it's unreal. It's yeah, so I love unreal. standing next to Bobby. I feel, I feel bad. <laughs> that tells you all you need to know about old, old Robert. <laughs> Mike just loves – Mike's probably like, you know what? I'll hang out with Bobby every day of the week because I look like fucking yeah, Andre. Right. <laughs> I'm Andre the Giant <laughs> next to Bobby. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, not even close off the top. Uh, he, he goes on the top rope. 
going for a splash, and, and he misses by a mile. Mike, did you think this was too choreographed here? Yeah, it kind of looked like it because Luger was sitting there looking up at him and moved away way too soon. That day, no, he moved out of the way. That was a strategic move. I don't. This is not a botch. This is just classic wrestling. You know what I'm saying? He moved out of the way. He took a flat back bump to save himself. I didn't, I'm not saying it's a bot. I just, I just think he moved too soon. He could have waited the extra, skip that extra little split second. And... He missed him by two seconds. I, I, yeah. And then two seconds may not sound a lot, but it is a lot in this in this kind of setting. Heard that. <laughs> hey, hey, Devin. Yes, feel like sir. Feel like answering a question, pal? All right. <laughs> now, I already know what Adam thinks, and I have a pretty good idea what James thinks. And uh, I want to know what you think. How did you think Lex looked in this match? Did you think it was due to Pillman? I don't, uh, well, no, I think Lex on. looked really good. Uh, he was being the typical heel, being show, chauvinistic and, like, you know, bragging and stuff. There was points where, like, Pillman had Lex in an arm bar and he's talking to the crowd and not paying attention, so he looked bad there. But, like, I don't know. Like, overall, he, I think Lex Luger looked like a star, like a future star. Uh, James, do you think there's one too many arm bars in this match? Boy, that's setting me up to be a dick, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> oh, and that, you know, was a shout out to JB going through the archives. In two weeks, he'll find that hilarious. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, come back. Uh, I get it for the time, uh, obviously, but you just got to judge – can't judge it by what we think about you know in hindsight you know however many years later but looking at the crowd reaction those were those were the hot moves at the time by the way who are the announcers here james holy shit i forgot to ask mate i'm glad you asked because it was our boy jim ross and uh bob Cottle, who he holds in a high 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 regard but yeah him and bob Cottle. so knowing jr obviously how he uh, speaks about bob Cottle, this is probably pretty badass for him to be announcing with bob Cottle right here it is pretty badass. It is pretty badass. Oh, now, where the hell am I? Because I went back to page one, James. <laughs> Let's not get out of hand, huh? Uh, All right. Clothesline to the front and to the back um, by uh, Luger. He's pumped up, and then he's stepping on Brian's neck. Good patient suplex by Luger. And then he does the arrogant pin, Adam. How many arrogant pins have you given in your time? Well, I mean... You know, I, I'm more of a stylistic, you know, type, you know, so I'll go from the top and I'll land on them. So the only the only arrogant pin I'll get is if, like, I'll slide up a little bit and kind of kind of raise up, put my chest out. But at the same time, the crossfield areas run their face. That's the most disrespectful pin you can actually give somebody. So I might have done that once or twice. Big boot, lead drop thermos? A <laughs> uh, little boot. Uh, <laughs> Elbow Little drop. thermos. <laughs> Medium thermos. We had a sunset flip by Brian Pillman. Am I right there, Adam? Oh, I... man. Sorry. I, wanted, Sorry. I was glad you brought this up because I wanted to hear sunset flip. <laughs> and I'm awesome. Right, so was that too slow, Devin? No, it wasn't slow. Why'd I write that then? <laughs> it kind of looked, well, it was... <laughs> I'm trying know. to remember the match now. I know what a sunset flip is, I guess, more now, but it did, like, I mean, so Lex is there, and then Pillman just, like, jump, roll, you know, and then just, like, I don't know. It looked. So, I mean, like, it you was can say what you want about slower the than, That was slower than the guys do it today. Yeah. But, like, uh, it wasn't, like, slow, slow. Like, you just jumped up, did the move. Well, hey, I there's thought. another one we're going to talk about in another match, too, that I have some words for. But you know, go ahead. Well, what, I, what is I that? Think, I think the mullet is what made it look slow because the <laughs> mullet was flailing in the air. It just made it look like it was a <laughs> slow said motion. Moment. You said so I think that's what it had to do. It had a lot to do with the, with the mullet. Slowed him down. <clears throat> and then we have another sunset flip off, off the top rope. Was this a little redundant, Mike? Yeah, you can't do too many of the same moves. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me well, ask you something. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You kind of no, froze up. Uh, yeah, I was going to say a perfect example of that is AEW down doing these flip-flop pins all the time. They keep rolling in the pins, rolling in the pins. We've had that in about four or five matches in the last two weeks. It happened last night in the Brit match. It's getting overused, so great point. All right. 
Hey, James, did you feel like there was a buckshot coming? A buckshot lariat by our yeah. favorite hangman page? By your favorite hangman. By your favorite. Yeah, but he's the people's clear. no longer <laughs> champ, I guess. But Yeah, he's done. I almost wore my hangman page shirt, but I was like, you know what? I just need to get in the spirit of Halloween. But uh, yeah, I will. I don't know if a buckshot per se, and I think you asked that in a condescending tone to hate on the hangman. No, page. he looked like he was winding up for. A, to me, it looked like he was winding up for a buckshot, but then he ended up doing the flying elbow. Yep, that's the so, you know, that's the thing. I thought you were getting excited. I thought you were going to jizz your pants. I thought that there was a lot of excitement when you said. I oh did my not God, correlate. Oh my page. God, he's about to do a buckshot lariat. Like that was actually not- the name. The 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 move has a name. It was called air pilm. That Did they call it that then? Did it, was yep. it called that yet? Yeah. Okay. I, I thought it was. Them. I miss things. I miss yeah, things. Yeah. No, I just I just knew that was named the movie. I miss them too, Brian. <laughs> Nostalgia. All right. So um, top rope, Brian missed drop kick. Um, again, I felt like he missed this by just a little too much, but I've already asked that several times in several different ways, so I'm not going to ask again. Luger reverses. Brian hits the chest on the rope, flying in the air. Luger for the pin. Now, Devin, I think I read in the notes how awesome you thought this ending was. Did I just, did I hear that? I just like the story of it because like every time that Lex would Irish whip Pillman off the ropes, he would bend over. Pillman would do that leap over. So after like the fourth or fifth time, he went to do it again. Irish whip Pillman ducked down, but stood up and caught him for the stun gun. It was just like, it was kind of built up in the story. So match psychology, huh? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Look at you. Look at you with your freaking knowledge, nice right? And, nice and, and following the storyline. Anyway, I thought it sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Actually, I thought it was a surprise, which is always nice to see a surprise. Well, I mean, at this time, is Luger all, finishing move only the rat, like torture rack? Is it even that? Yeah. And the, okay. Yeah, the, the bow. Adam, Adam, okay. So then he could have finished. He didn't finish him with his finisher. It was a different way of finishing him. That's, I, I would say that's, that's different. It's good. Yeah, he had the the forearm thing. Was that before or after this? I don't remember. Freaking eighty nine. I was thirteen. You were yeah, negative yeah. four. You were negative one. Coach this, was this 11. was on my fifth birthday. I was four. <laughs> no, nope. coach was three. Almost. Coach was fifteen. I was thirteen. So. Yeah, so was good. Hey, as an old person, what do you think? <laughs> uh, let me ask you, uh, Coach. Do you think this is a good example of who got over and who went over, as Jr. always says? Oh, by far, this was a match that put Brian Pillman on the map. Um, he was tremendous in this match. Uh, obviously, maybe with a little bit better technology in 1989, they might have reversed the finish the way that uh, Flying Brian was doing that night. He put the F in Flying Brian. Uh, oh, yeah. People knew that after this match, people made it a point, went out of their way to see Flying Brian Pillman. Because now he said after this match, he started to change his outfit, started to change the way he talked, started to get better matches. So without a shadow of a doubt, Lex Luger, great man, but you did a great thing by putting Pillman over. At the push. I, Actually, um, one, th- one thing I thought was pretty funny in this was a shot of the cheerleaders, and then some guy jumps in front of him with the sign, and as soon as that guy jumps in front of him, they cut it off and goes back to the match. I thought that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> WWE cut three minutes of this match. The match time was 16 minutes, but the recording was only 13 minutes. So I don't know what they cut out. I couldn't really find out, but yeah. I couldn't even find the match at first. I don't know what was wrong with me that day. Too much gold. Yeah. Halloween Havoc season one. Crazy. I <laughs> Crazy. Swear I saw. No I swear I thought it said 90. Especially in bet- fucking October on Peacock. Terror. I'm Hard to find out. Halloween Havoc. I'm like talking to my wife, like, you know, I don't have 20 minutes to be looking for this damn thing on YouTube. <laughs> and then uh, Devin's like, it's right here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, no questions from the fans on this match in particular. All the ma- uh, questions are set for the second one. Shot so uh, unless anybody has anything they want to add, uh, Adam, you picked this match. What was your reasoning behind it? Oh, because it was a good Halloween having match. Plus, I know we ain't done a lot of Brian Pillman Senior stuff. True. So, um, I'm a I'm a sucker for some of the nostalgia stuff. And like Coach said, I think this was one of uh, Brian Pillman's coming out parties. I mean, I know his his uh, move sets kind of limited right here because 
with all the arm, you know, the arm ringers and everything they're doing. I t- actually they're sitting there kind of chatting back and forth. If you'll watch, and Luger's actually guiding Pillman through the match. So I thought highly of Luger here also because this is one of Luger's best matches back then, three years into him wrestling. Well, so this is a good match coming out part of both of them. Story. If well, if, if Luger's guiding ropes, you in a match. Yeah. I wish there was a better build-up to it. but Right? <laughs> 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 but no, I, uh, I do agree. Like, I wanted to reiterate, I guess, that fact of, you know, uh, sometimes if you listen to the crowd, like back to what Rosie was saying, that crowd was all for Pillman. You know, like they were gung-ho, Pillman, Pillman. So the fact that he lost maybe did like help elevate his stock. And then like people like actually gave a shit about him. And, you know, then, you know, then his character can build and progress and all that stuff. I like that. this. Um, I Wait, actually think that. I don't uh, mean to correct you, James. You're a hell of a guy. But this is the power of flying Brian. Actually, Lex got the big pop at the beginning. And because of how well Flying Brian did, they turned and they uh, started supporting Flying Brian. That just shows how good he did in this match because Philly is a heel town. And for Philly to uh, change up in the middle of the match and go baby face, that just shows you Flying Brian was the shit. Yeah, you definitely have to earn it there for sure. Uh, I will say this. I thought I wish somebody would then. (laughs) Boom roasted. Well, you'll have fun here, uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, I'll be zooming in live from this apartment probably while y'all are in Philly, fucking eating horse feces. I do, I do, or you know, hey, at the pace this kick out crew is going, you might have a press pass, pal. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will. And y'all, all right, all right kick out crew, <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, kick out crew. How do we to say this? Fuck Philly, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm gonna get jumped in the parking lot and mercilessly beat them, but hey. I hear y'all have good health care because you know people eat horse feces and survive. So, love of God, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I thought that um, Luger actually. I I know you guys don't all agree. I thought Luger worked well in this match. I think he's underrated as an in ring uh, performer. I, I think he gets a bad rap, and I think if you if or if you didn't hear everything you've ever heard about him before, you would go into this match. You would think it's a better match. I think there's a lot of ideas that come into this match ahead of time, preconceived, if you will. So uh, I think he works well in this match, but I know it's not a proper I, I agree. Uh, I think he, this is one he, of his better matches. He did good leading the match, too, because you could tell he was calling the match. And like I said, he was real – he was real arrogant his first couple of years, if you'll watch his uh, biography. So him being three years into it and leading the match this well, I thought he did real good. Yeah, and he's – I he's do love it when business. he was in that little armbar missing mold or whatever he was in, and he's sitting there yelling at the fans. I hated that. No <laughs> selling the move. He was just yelling at the fans. Tillman's just looking like, what? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah, there was a part two of the match where the, I feel like Tillman and the referee were just having a conversation. And I'm like, what is yeah. this ridiculous conversation that's happening? Are they planning the next move? Because you could do, you definitely saw some, and I know you're going to get into this in the second match a little bit, Adam, but I definitely saw some talking in this match, uh, communicating like, hey, this is what we're going to do now kind of stuff. Because otherwise, why would they be talking? <laughs> not, you don't talk to the bad guy, right? Hey, you're yeah. doing great so far. I just want to let you know. <laughs> that was a beautiful chop earlier in the match. <laughs> yeah. People so. like talking, talking about people. people. Yeah, see? I know the song. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, they did the Monster right. Mash. Halloween. Yeah, I got it. Because this is Thriller. Another good Halloween song. Love yeah, Michael Jackson. College, I, did a, I did a skit to the Thriller song. It's oh crazy. god that's that but that's i mean hey awesome <laughs> i also did men in tights oh boy I bless you. and i was uh luke skywalker and lancelot what else you got <laughs> and santa which is funny because Lance- in philly being santa wouldn't you get snowballed but hey we're um, gonna cover so we're gonna cover that in like what two months <laughs> <laughs> hey Brad, I heard it was Lance a little, not Lance a lot. Hey oh, there Ooh. it is. That's K Fabe. <laughs> waka waka waka. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm done with this match. Back to you, James. Hell yeah. Well, hey, what is more exciting than that match? My God. It's Devin Dowling. So Devin, what uh, you know, 
you talk, you all just, you pretty much called us all old men earlier. So, uh, what are the kids getting into these days? <laughs> this, this is just my topic. So, my topic was actually, I listened earlier this week to Busted Open Radio, and they had uh, Wendy Richter on there. And we covered, we covered Wendy Richter like a couple months ago here in the Kick Air Crew back in the archives. So, I, uh, in our women's I just, series, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update. Yeah, because, Oh, she hasn't really been on the in the wrestling world atmosphere at all really lately. Let me but, guess, she has an OnlyFans? No, no. 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 Okay. Quite the contrary. Oh, Thank even, God. But even Marie does though. Oh hell yeah. Go ahead, Adam. Or, or, <laughs> I'm thinking about even <laughs> Marie now. Eva, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, what do you think of the red hair going? Yeah, I'm like, his fucking hair. I'm, like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, all right, Wendy Richter. She actually, after she was kind of disowned from wrestling, uh, she didn't do much. Like, not disowned from wrestling, but from the WWF. Um, she didn't do much in the wrestling atmosphere itself. She said that she did a couple of interviews and a couple of meetings and stuff. Um, but then she decided to go to college. She uh, went for 16 years, ended up getting an occupational therapy master's degree. I I didn't even know what occupational therapy was. Yeah. I had to look it up. Back here. But uh, now she's currently showing dogs and horses and all around Florida. And she said that she's making 10 times the money that she ever did in wrestling. So, No shit. Half of the money went to moolah. I was about to say, uh, you know, <laughs> would she make $20 a show? Maybe a, a hot dog and a, a soda? Yeah. Well, she did say it wasn't much. Well, that's just kind of... I thought it was a cool interview and there's an update on Wendy Richter's life now. So she I, went to college uh, how long? 16 for, years. She went for 16 years to get a 10-year degree. But she was doing it while working Is a she full-time from job and going on Jesus. and going to school at night shift. She, she gotta be from Alabama. So just to um add to what Devin said there, I listened to the interview as well. She is a born-again Christian now, and she says she's happier than she's ever been. In wrestling, but she um, made it clear that she is glad for what happened, even though they talked about the, the original screw job. They talked about the original screw job with Mula. Mm -hmm. And when she talks about it, Devin, I don't know if you heard it this way. She still seems pretty freaking bitter to me because they talked oh, yeah. about putting her in the in the women's battle royal. She goes, Well, if there's if Mula's in it, I'll do it for free. And she's saying it like that. And she's telling me she's over it. She ain't over nothing. Yeah, and then they told her, uh, I'm sorry, Wendy, Moolah's passed away. <laughs> yeah. And then she said something like, well, now that she's dead, I guess I can't get revenge on her. It was something like that. Like, not those exact words I'm paraphrasing. She's bitter, but she's doing okay. But she basically said she never made any money. Um, she was made less than the, the top guy. She never, she never made a dime from it. So everything she made went right out the window. But she is a Hall of Famer, right, Devin? Yeah, yeah, she was happy <laughs> and proud of that. Yeah. Right. And she said that if uh, if Cindy Lauper ever gets inducted, she wants to be the one to give her a speech. I think that'd be cool. Which uh, it's it's kind of ridiculous that not only is Cindy Lauper not in the WWE Hall of Fame, she is also not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You guys know. Yeah, I would yeah, say I it's just, definitely it weird. Uh, the WWE Hall of Fame thing does kind of trip me out because she's one of the like biggest proponents of that rock and wrestling thing. You know, like she was the star that they. They kind of, you know, jumped on the coattails of maybe, I guess, for lack of a better term. They yeah, helped cross-promote each other, <laughs> I guess you could say. I think we're going to see a big change in the Hall of Fame. True. Drew Carey's in it, right? And he hates yeah, wrestling. He trashes it every really single chance he gets. Change. Like, he didn't yeah, – what did he contribute? That she – like, she contributed to a, he a time. He a rumble that one time. Yeah. <laughs> he got choke slammed by Kane. Yeah, he yeah. offered Kane money – you know, what's a burnt demonic, <laughs> you know, person going to do with cash, Harry? That that uh, MTV video alone with Cindy Lauper and like Blue Albano and all the wrestlers should get her in the Hall of Fame by itself. Yeah. Let alone everything else with the rock and wrestling that went on. I mean, that it it's just something again, something they have against her. Is, is, I think it, it's uh, because she advertises for those psoriasis commercials all the time, Cindy Lauper. And uh, Vince had a had an, had a issue with psoriasis, so I think now that he's gone, uh, Triple H will put her in. Now he did have him? he did have her on, like they were, she was on. What was it? Seven years, eight years ago, like 
she came back <laughs> so even weirder with with piper before piper died anyway great job devin oh, Way to keep yeah, Devin, that was actually a good topic man uh i know your demographic is probably going to ruin this momentum you're on but hey at least you're off to a good start my demographic's and, good and that being said if i look at the outline well my god we got mike for a second time <laughs> well, let me tell you about my week. <laughs> my daughter is in class. I actually think it was supposed to be Adam, you know. So, Adam, you uh, what you got for us? Now, I don't, don't say that, so I feel like I'm going out of turn because you usually get yelled at for not looking at the time or the, 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 the whatever you call it. But when I, I do love, look at it, my name's not even on the damn thing. I place. love I think this. We, so I think much. we need another producer. I have it right here. My right. name is nowhere for near. Real. We have Adam's it. friend on doing a, like a favor for all of us. And Brad's like, well, damn, Adam didn't look at the outline. And now <laughs> Here's the outline. my name's nowhere on it. I... <laughs> Never Thanks, said I was for Dick. <laughs> Richard, Richard, Dick. Thanks, Richard, Richard. Richard, Richard. Time. You can't plan that any better. <laughs> uh... No, I'm getting ready for my trip to uh, New Orleans, leaving out. As, well, as we record, I'll be leaving tomorrow. By the time you listen, I'll be back. So I had an amazing time. Thank, thanks, Frank, for the amazing time. We went to SmackDown. SmackDown was awesome. <laughs> Roman Reigns lost his title, I wish. Um, the Logan but, uh, Paul? No. Uh, yeah. Fucking right. kids, man. Fucking kids. Eagles won, right? Oh, blow go. That was a top ball game. Jeez. It was three to three. Terrible. <laughs> But yeah, that was a terrible game. I, I'm glad I don't watch <laughs> NFL football. Um, and we're going on like a uh, like a like a haunted ghost trip, Frank planned. So that was fun. I enjoyed it. I love ghost stuff. So. Watch out Thanks for me. little Jimmy jumping in your arms. Oh, Lord. yeah, uh, you might get scared. I'll be jumping in Frank's arms, so Frank will be holding both of us. Or he did hold both of us. Or, I just need a hush. <laughs> But I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> I, I can't wait for you to check in the hotel and then the clerk be like, so one queen bed for all three of you? You know, he'll be like, yep. That's in Nashville. Not in New Orleans. <laughs> like, my kids are going this time, so I have to be decent. Oh, I got you. I got I, I to gotta be dad this, this weekend. Fucking parenting. I don't know, but damn. <laughs> I guess I don't know. So I hope y'all got to see me on SmackDown when y'all watched it Friday. Yay! I did see it. It was great. Are you going to be wearing a kick-out crew shirt? I sure as hell will be. All right. If you get caught on SmackDown or any wrestling show. He did, Devin. We saw him on TV. Ah, Well, damn it. I owe Adam a shirt now. My gosh, it was dear. And it was amazing, (laughs) man. You didn't see me during that match? Oh, I, I, I recorded. I'll have to go back. God. I know you can't talk about, DVR, a, talk about but... a finish and it, you know, it leaves you wanting more, man. We're gonna have to tune into the next SmackDown to find out the thrilling conclusion of that storyline. Thanks, guys, for leaving me off the outline that I actually looked at this time and not a part of. Uh, it would be Brad, not guys. It's Brad. You are show. welcome. Always remember, you are welcome. it was com- completely planned. Yeah, it's all because you're <laughs> this guy, this freaking guy. And if you want to message Brad personally, let's just give his number out on air. (laughs) 1-800-RICHARD Richardson. (laughs) Philadelphia Way. Shit Eater, or 73707 Shit Eater Avenue. Philly Philly State Drive. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess that's a great segment, man. Enjoyed uh, seeing you on SmackDown. Glad you had fun in New Orleans. Good shit. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually call an audible on this outline. And uh, I would like to go to the movie uh, and TV time with Coach if we could do that. No problem. Little, Let's do it. Just a little flippy flop, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Coach. 1989. Uh, an over, Fight an the overused power. Qu- yeah, an, an overused right. question in, in movies was who's the best Batman? So I'm not going to go to that. In 1989, the number one movie was Batman. Also in 1989, Terry Funk was in the movie Roadhouse. Mm. And on behalf of uh, the, ad, uh, uh, the kickout crew, we want to wish uh, Terry Funk all the best in his recovery. You're a legend. You're, you're, you're the man, Terry. But the movie we're going to talk about today is Weekend at Bernie's. 
I know you guys have seen that movie, and I know you guys got some opinions on it. So what do you guys remember about Weekend at Burns? There was a dead man. <laughs> True. So the fact that he actually had sex in it was yeah. uh, the thing I remember the most is because the woman walks out of there like she did, her world was completely rocked. And those guys, what was it, John, John, who was it, John Cusack? No, no, it wasn't him. I don't remember, Silverman? Yeah. Um, comes out, and he's like, guy gets laid even when he's dead. You know, I, I remember that the most. And I remember that he had a hairpiece, which, as you know, episode one. How's it feel knowing that a dead man does better sex than you do, Brad? Another day in my man. life of, of, of not being surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said, not being surprised. All right, Devin. So when you were um, you had were forced to watch this movie by your parents, and it's probably old for them even. Yeah. How terrible did you think it was? Because I I'm just I, I assume that you hate it. I've never seen this. Oh, you movie. Have you asshole. heard of it? You have you heard of it? I, I have. De I've definitely <laughs> heard of it. It's like the weekend or summer camp, and the the guy dies, so but they still want to throw the party, so they dress him up or something i don't know that is not it at all <laughs> not it at all they are what he's their <laughs> boss and he wants he wants to kill them because they found out about the company secret so he invites them to his beach house but he, along the way he gets killed but they got to keep him alive and make everybody think he's alive damn you Devin. i mean Sorry, what are, you, you know are you talking about weekend of bernie's yeah and freaking Devin's never oh, seen yeah, talking, about, talking about like spring break 89 so Bernie is their boss? Yes. Yes. Oh. Kind of how we prop you up on this show. Oh, I didn't know it. Weekend at Bernie's was going to be. You know, there's a sequel? There's a sequel to it. He yeah. comes back. <laughs> he comes back still dead. <laughs> the other guys are like, we're not going to be in it this time. <laughs> now, here's a movie you've seen from 89, Dev, and I had a backup for you Turner and Hooch. Fox, no, we haven't seen that. <laughs> you haven't seen Turner and Hooch? There's a new one on Disney Plus I've seen. Uh, I'm gonna kill you. That's Josh packing it, and oh, it's Dang. pretty good. Who? You know, Tom Hanks is in Turner and Hooch. Yes. Josh Peck. That is an awesome movie. Can we mute his microphone for like Please. an hour? <laughs> yeah. For real. Stop his stop his video. You know, Tom Hanks was in a lot of movies before Forrest Gump. Their pal. The best movie of all time. <laughs> oh, and, and uh, the Academy Award, I wanted to double check this. Um, for Best Picture in 89, another classic. Dustin Hoffman. Remember that one, Dev uh, Devin? When he was autistic and counted cards? Name the movie, oh, pal. Oh. Give it, yeah, let's give it, yeah, I was going to give you some hints. Like, it's pouring down. <laughs> yeah, I, I have and seen that one. You are Judge Walker. In five years, you'll be a man. Judge Wapner. So, in yeah. Tom Raymond, that one? when Ray I was Walker. little, I went to the dentist, and there was a big pic poster of Rain Man on the wall. And I was just staring at it the whole time when we were in the waiting room. And my dad was like, we need to watch this movie after after this. So, I, I watched it, like, a couple times. It's just, just pretty a poster good. of them walking next to each other down the street, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually yeah. – yeah, that's what I see. Yeah, Here's I some other great 1989 movies that I know you guys are going to pop for. Major League, yeah, Hell, yeah, wow, oh, hey. fuck right. yeah, dude, Moxley, Vaughn, baby, fucking, you know, Vaughn, Uncle Buck, great, Great. shout Are out to John Candy, Frank, 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 Bruno, eat, eat ass, shout out to John Candy. Oh yeah, I don't know, this was a, a kind of a cult classic. Fletch lives. Hell I yeah, Fletch, Fletch lives. Fletch yeah, oh, look at Brad. <laughs> when he was at the uh, when he he, he was at the, the, the Harley David the Harley Davidson, he tried to be I'm John Harley. Okay, Devin, there. hold your hands up like this. Hold your hands up like this, Devin. Oh, I so I know you're not typing. I'm gonna create a bet here. Five dollars a person. <laughs> hold your hands up so you don't check the internet. <laughs> Who played Fletch? He's six four, six Wait, eight with the average. Make your bets. Make your bets. Make your bets. Do you he doesn't know fucking not? know. I don't even fucking know. You better Dang. know. There's a bank named that... after him. I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> Wells Fargo. <laughs> I don't. I have so no bad. idea. <laughs> Who's car named after him? Mister Bank of America. Uh, uh, Ryan <laughs> Lamborghini. I don't vacation. Know. Christmas vacation. Oh, oh Chevy, Chevy Chase. Chase. Hey, Whoa! Glasses are off. They're off. 
early. A little early for this. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right. Oh, you got yeah. it right after 74 hints. <laughs> yep. I'm just seeing, oh, look who's talking. That was another great movie from 1980. Who's in that, ah, Travolta. John Travolta. Devin, Devin didn't know. <laughs> Christy Alley. Yeah, Christy well, Alley. I was watching really a lot of movies thing. this year. There was a baby. And the worst movie of 1989 that got the, whatever they call that movie, the worst police Raspberry. academy. Yeah, the Raspberry. Police Academy 6. Oh, man. oh damn it. I missed my best fucking. Oh, I was going to kick this episode off with the Welcome to Hav uh, Halloween Havoc 2, Electric Boogaloo. Fuck, I was going <laughs> to say that and I missed it. Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. That's a great movie, but that was actually 1987. Go through the whole breaking series. It was that was break dancing was great back then, but Hell thanks yeah. for bringing that up. I like old school rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've seen every one of these movies. <laughs> That's all I know. Well, yeah, you're trying to get your fingers wet, your taking a girl to watch these movies, man. I don't blame you. 13. I was 13. That's what I'm saying. That's movie time. That's movie time in your life. There's not much else. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, girl, we can get the large popcorn. You know, I got back when you. popcorn and a soda was four bucks. That's right? when you could go. We could go to Eaton Park and the movies for thirty bucks. Damn. Yeah, but you got no reason on the popcorn. Plus a full yeah, tank. No. Plus get it home. I was about to say now you can't even drive there for thirty bucks. <laughs> I used to put five dollars in my tank and it would give me ten gallons. Nah, that's not. Wow. Good. I would never <laughs> I remember, forget I remember, my dad flipping shit when gas went over a dollar a gallon. I remember. I remember, I remember sitting in the back seat of my dad's car. And him complaining when it went from 99 cents to like a dollar nine. I yeah, oh, so that was a big day. He that was hit a big the day. roof. Damn, he said, I can't damn, believe man. gas is more than 99 cents a gallon. I will You're never fucking walking to school, kid. Over a dollar. My dad was like, he we drove around to all the other gas stations. Like, can you believe this? It's over a dollar. It's a dollar seven over here. Can you believe this? I'm driving over there to get that dollar four. Well, tell yeah, your dad that, 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 that in San Diego this week it was six dollars and sixty nine cents. Six dollars and sixty nine cents. What? In San Diego, and that what? was at Arco. That was the cheapest Arco. We're three ninety nine here in Philly right now. Boy, I'm yeah, sucking dick on the corner for a tank of gas. Okay, <laughs> that's three quarter stock. Hypothetically, and finally, the best <laughs> action movie of nineteen eighty nine. Who Devin's not going to know was in it. Tango and Cash. Now again, Devin, do you know who's in that? That would be Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> do you know who they are? I know you Sylvester know, Stallone. You know Rocky? Rocky. Yeah, Rambo. You know, you're you know, you're Billy Ass really? would say that. Gar Here's your homework, Devin. I want go, you go, to go, watch go. the movie uh, Cobra mm -hmm. with Cobra. Sylvester Stallone. You'll oh, okay. Yeah. Watch them all. Watch everything with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Bopper, right, my mom yeah. will that, That's movie. your uh, homework this week. All right. Yeah, watch watch every movie. movie. For real. So is that, that movie awesome. time with Coach? That's movie that time. Fun, I wanted to give you a fun. full plethora of movies. Uh, I guess it's my turn time. again. I guess. All right. Now it's time to. Uh, Are you changing yeah. costumes or something? Why? No, why man. Well, oh. well, well. It wouldn't be the Halloween spirit without letting me go near it, because no matter if it's Halloween here or Halloween there. I'm just hoping you don't have no hair. And I'm not talking about up top, but boy, they love to slop. You know, I just love Halloween, man. It's uh, one of my favorite holidays. I just like, uh, you know, dressing in costumes because Halloween's the best. So, you know, well, well, well. And since everybody thinks I hate women anyway, I might as well uh, dress up as a guy that would be, you know, like cut some badass promos in the ECW days. So... Why not, huh? If you're not, I thought you were the dude from you. Saul. I thought you were Jigsaw from the movie Saul. Wait a minute. Are you Joel Gardner? Well, I, I would say this costume is very quintessential. And you know, for <laughs> goddamn fact, I am a stud muffin. So, yeah. Love oh, this. Uh, I like you know. the gimmick hair in your cleavage. I like I that. Thought, I that thought you were from hair, Saul. Baby, that real. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. I'm a grown-ass man. You'll get there, Devin. Don't worry. Have you, you got a little beard, oh man? Have you cute little beard? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's Halloween. The freaks come <laughs> out at night. <laughs> you know. We are now kicked off of YouTube. I recommend <laughs> you not watch the video version. I recommend <laughs> if you want to get your panties wet, because you know this rocket is ready to jet. 
I would watch uh, the you know the two YouTube version. I am picturing Allison watching this right now. Well, I hope she does. She's is... one of the. Oh, well, I'm not going to call anyone out specifically, but I don't hate women. I love them all. <laughs> so I wanted to choose Brad, the costume work for your daughter, of a guy please. that really loves all the women. <laughs> I thought that, that was a nice place about the jet and everything. And when has that line ever worked on any woman you've ever been with? It's Halloween. I'm not, you know, I'm Joel Gardner. Oh, okay. Thanks, Joel. Yeah. Kayfabe and the Kayfabe building the Kayfabe. I love it. We're breaking the fourth wall, yet building a house around it. So there's four more walls. Last week, Ric Flair. This week, Joel Gardner. Who's coming next? Well, hey. I just like the spirit of Halloween, man. Everybody thinks so. Oh, After Dave this episode, nobody's women. coming he in. Just hates Halloween. <laughs> well, well, well. Could that not be any more wrong as I serenade you oh, with a song? And I may hit this bong, but I'll fuck you all night long. Ooh. Gardner, man, I love it. I miss our uh, Zooms with him and uh, the, the meanie and sure enough. Real. Uh, my, well, we can tell Sorensen because he's fucking in the back pocket of both of them. He's probably uh, over hey, there right now. We miss your boys. You know, that was extreme was what it was called. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. We were off the... the we're, He's I know moved on. Off He's off moved on road. to Sunny Kiss. I'm oh, not Sunny Kiss. Uh, Sunny. Not, who was he with? Well, hey, in, uh, there we go. Sunny Day. In Sunny, Chicago. Anything, anyway. Sunny Ono. Sunny Ono, uh, that's right. Sunny Ono. You know. he, ain't nobody getting Sunny. She's uh, locked up. I can't believe it. This is the Spirit <laughs> of Halloween A-W. Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. You know, I, I heard uh, Sonny Ono on Busted Open the other day, and all I kept thinking him of was, where's where's Sorensen? The whole time, I'm right. like, yeah, that guy was with Sorensen the entire time. Now he's on Busted Open, talking about, what was it? who was the one that died? The Japanese wrestler. Wow, good home. one. Good one, Brett. Uh, Anoki? Antonio Anoki. Yeah, I well, saw Oh, yeah, just some dude. <laughs> you fucking dick. <laughs> wow, Brad. I'm flying on the seat of my pants here, man. Well, I hear you. <laughs> If you think I wrote any of those things, uh, you were <laughs> naive for thinking I put that much effort into this. <laughs> but, you know. I just watched the whole thing on Anoki today, too. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. I did anyway. more research on Bobber earlier. <laughs> so. Adam did more buildup than you had for that, Brad. Boom. <laughs> That's what we call a tafer in the business. But yeah. There's a lot of people on a mute here right now. Everybody that taking a shot. <laughs> no, they're all throwing up after seeing uh, Joel Gertner. Wow. <laughs> Body shaming. Much, huh? Body shaming. Our female fans are, are not going to like that. We did five fucking uh, episodes on women. You know, we don't body shame here. I wonder if we True. can get uh, Richter on. Seems like she's not doing much. I would like to change Coach, out of this. Hit her this up. neck brace does not fit, and I'll this try. jacket is hot as fuck. <laughs> so, right. And I'm also up next, so I might as well just stay <laughs> with it. <laughs> well what better way to celebrate halloween than in a costume because i love halloween look at my co-host they don't so hey that's all i gotta say there's your spiller of halloween uh but hey. i'm a podcaster <laughs> me too honorary ooze. Oh. <laughs> if i were adam okay. i would cover my eyes too <laughs> No, he's yeah, a ninja he's a, turtle. He's a ninja turtle. Speaking of, uh, you know, cover the eyes, let's uh, spin the wheel a little bit. What do you say, fellas? So our oh, second match we're covering so is... There's a spinning right now, so might as well spin the wheel, too. Good one. Go oh. hallucinogen. The room's spinning. The world is spinning out of control of Disco Business song. Oh. But, hey, uh, we're going to go with Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano. Can't help but do the uh, the Finkel, the following contest. But yeah, uh, it is a spin the wheel, make a deal, Devil's Playground match for the NXT North American Championship. Oh, you didn't catch that, and you want me to repeat it? Hell yeah, I'd love to. It is a spin the wheel, make the deal, Devil's Playground match for the NXT North American Championship. Fuck yeah. It uh, was from <laughs> NXT Halloween Havoc. Yeah. That's a ridiculous title for a match. I mean, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, it's almost up there with Texas Death Match and Coal Miner's Glove Match. Those are three words. This is a fucking, you know, what am I reading the soliloquy while I have to announce this? <laughs> it is from NXT Halloween Havoc 2020. Mm. 
Can't wait mm. for uh, I can't wait for how all this era ages moving forward. But mind you, this one is on October 28th. Whoa, is that the same date from earlier? Crazy. Uh, 2020. <laughs> it takes place at the Capitol Wrestling Center, or as you may know it, uh, you know, it is the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Attendance. I don't know, like 15 people with masks and a shitload of screens. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This was back in the, uh, you know, this is going to age so badass. <laughs> but there's a lot of people with masks on the lower part, maybe 15, 20. But they were a live crowd. And then a bunch of screens. I don't know how many screens were in attendance. Sorry, I didn't get those, uh, you know, numbers. But the match length went a uh, little over 21 minutes. Hell, <laughs> and it's a doozy. And uh, Meltzer gave it, couldn't find it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, swing it on in to Devin with the mesh build while I do another costume change. I got a question. Have any of y'all been on one of those screens? I was supposed to be, and I never did it, but that was a question. You remember the very first one they did, and there was, like, four people that did, like, pictures of Benoit? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, it made TV. It <laughs> oh yeah. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, there was like, oh uh, yeah, there was a bunch of bad things. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. All right, but this feud, the background between Johnny Gargano and Damian Priest, it kind of starts a couple months, like about four months before this actual pay per view, when Johnny Gargano was trying to uh, defeat Bronson Reed for the North American Championship. Uh, he would not be successful, and Bronson Reed would retain. Then, about three weeks later, Damian Priest would be able to capture that title over Bronson Reed, and that just infuriated Johnny Gargano, and he immediately went after Damian Priest. He was attacking him backstage. He was going after him. And that led to a North American title match between Damian Priest and Johnny Gargano at TakeOver 31. At that match, Damian Priest would again uh, be successful and defeat Johnny Gargano. And that would just make Johnny Gargano turn whiny and bitchy and complaining all the time and just became a real whine and heel. And then cried to get his rematch back. So he was granted his rematch, but it needs to be in the terms of spin the wheel, make a deal. So we're here at Halloween Havoc 2020. Great, Devin. Adam, what is the problem? You're shaking I, figured, your I figured I'd dress up as a robber since El Karai robbed me of my vision for the last hour. <laughs> hey, see, that's what Halloween's all about, baby. You know, that's the spirit, Adam. I'm glad you had the spirit. Hey, Coach, this is the first Halloween Havoc in 20 years. With uh, Triple H, obviously, he's behind this, all this nostalgic that he was doing. Do you think it's a good idea? Yo, yeah, yeah. Uh, War Games, Halloween Havoc, Great American Bash. Bring them back, but it better be good. Because if you make it shitty, then it's going to backfire on you. But if you make it good, why not? This was the opening match of the card. Johnny Gargano ripped up that pumpkin. This set the tone for the entire card. It was a great match. Shotzi came out, spun the wheel. It was fabulous. This was a great event. Do you think that was subconsciously Gargano cutting the, you know, like, hey, we're going to do the WCW Halloween Havoc, but... Like, we're going to open it with the very first match. Cut that fucking inflatable uh, pumpkin. Maybe. Triple H thing, think, you know what I'm saying? Do you think Vince McMahon, coach, do you think he was on board with this, or do you think he just it wasn't on his radar? I don't think NXT really mattered to him during this time right now. He, he pushed that off to Triple H, and then when he got sick, he saw what happened to NXT when he took control of it, uh, and he put his people in there, 2.0, and down the uh, shitter, just like a, a number of Dukes. So gotcha. I don't think he had much in, input in this. I think uh, the the owning of the intellectual property probably had a lot to play with it because, hey, might as well, you know? Yeah, I agree with that too. Damian Priest entrance, Mike, with the music. Uh, what would you think of all that? I thought that was badass. With the guitar, him dancing, and yeah, that was that was, that was badass entrance. I thought so too. Hey, uh, James, I... I, I know you've already alluded to this, but how was the crowd on hand again? You said it was a good crowd? Well, I, I mean, they they must have mic'd up a lot of stuff or because they wouldn't put in crowd filler noise, would All they? Right, and that's what I'm getting to here. They I would not lie to us that. like this. 
let me ask you a question. In this circumstance, where there is not a crowd, do you think the pumped in crowd noise is okay? You have to do it. It's just a, a thing you just have. Because what do you want to hear? Like, just uh, the what are those uh, empty arena matches and all that stuff? Like, and what do we always say about wrestling? Crowd, 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 crowd. What do all the wrestlers and uh, execs and all that stuff, the podcast we listen to? Boy, it was rough without that crowd, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a must. But I'm going to talk about yeah, yeah, it's an unnecessary evil, especially in a pandemic uh, time. In that situation. Do, What's y'all, up, do y'all think it's different for them, the wrestlers, knowing that it's pumped in sound and not an actual crowd reaction? I'm sure it's different, but I bet you it helps a little. That's yeah. my guess. And it's not, nothing's perfect. Like, look, well, but I mean, is it pumped in like... I mean, it worked. On but. them, or is it pumped in on the production side? We have always asked that. And I don't know if we've that's, ever got a legit true. answer. Do you know the answer to that, Adam? If that if they heard what we heard? I'm I'm Hook, by the way. I like it. <laughs> Mess up hair. I'm but, uh, yeah, like, uh, the girl from when hearing in, that can all hear it. <laughs> well, Edge, hear it. Edge talked about it. He said, uh, you know, Edge and Randy Orton, when they had their match, they told them right before they had their greatest match ever that they were going to pump in crowd noise and Ed said it, it wasn't perfect but it didn't make a difference it kind of helped with the bumps and getting morale upbeat because he was talking about the match beforehand there was no noise and it's just totally different so they had yeah, the crowd noise and they said it made it a better match for them so do they just have somebody in the back like with a cheer button and a boo button and this not like, yeah oh body slam or whatever super move cheer Oh, uh, yeah. does the music. Mild cheer, loud cheer, heavy It'll cheer. Happen. <laughs> you know, this is awesome chant. <laughs> they right, had a right. small crowd here. They had like the first row or two behind the fence and the plastic glass. And then they also had the uh, Thunderdome behind them. So right, it was a little right. bit of crowd, a little bit of Thunderdome. And that's what I liked about like with NXT and even AEW did it. They had that small crowd. So just that yeah. small crowd made a big difference compared to like what Raw and SmackDown, they had nobody besides. It, right. And the thing about that was, you know, we can say what we want about the pandemic era, but that song, the Jericho song, um, his entrance music, it got over during that era to me oh, yeah. more right. than ever with those thousand fans in attendance. So it did work. Look, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I don't want to go back, but... Look, they made they did the best they could. Me and Rosie went to a couple just had pandemic people... era dailies uh, place matches, and like it's cool and all, but boy, it's like put your mask up, put your mask up, please, put your mask up. And then it's like you would have like three people here, six rows over. You'd have like you know three, four people here. It's just like oh yeah, well even like in AEW when they only had like the wrestlers and the producers and everybody from backstage standing right there, you know, yeah, it made it made a big difference. That's so, true. Gargano's the heel here, Adam, or uh, not Adam, sorry, uh, Devin. What do you think of uh, Gargano as a heel? Uh, I think he's a better baby face, but I do think he's an all right heel. Like he, he knows how to, he knows how to bring off that heelish, like, uh, I don't know the word, like uh, the vibe, I guess. Like uh, he, he's, he's swearing, he's slicing the pumpkin. He's bringing an attitude. Like uh, I, I still think he's a better baby face worker though. So that brings I, me to this, Adam. I does disagree. he does he work as a heel, like as in the ring? Oh yeah, because uh, he he does stuff. You know, like later on, he super like he super kicks the uh, when he opens the coffin, the little thing jumps out, and he super kicks that. And then he stabs the pumpkin, and just just little stuff he does. You know, he's not the biggest heel or the the most vocal heel, but he does little. He has little heel tendencies. What what were you gonna say, Mike? I was gonna say I disagree, and this is the first match I've seen with him being a heel. I don't watch NXT, and I just from this one match, I think he did a fantastic job, and it's almost to me like Daniel Bryan. I much rather Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, whatever, him as a heel instead of a babyface. I think him as a a babyface, it's too much of like a work. Like I don't. I just I, I think they do better as a heel. It's Something, Halloween. I think, I think we got hacked. It's Halloween. Of course, we're going to have some scary things. Ugh. Oh, boy. Oh, no. What's Who's going there? on? Oh, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Goodness. John Alva. I've, I've been hearing that I've had to come on the kickout crew for months now. So here we are. Blessing the crew. And now I'm the one that wants to kick out. Boom! Well, hey, man, Alba, when life gets you down, just kick out it too. 
Yeah. That's what we do. That's what we do. Oh. Yeah. That's what we all I do. Just, We're the kick I just out. had my hook impression. Hang on, let me let me. Okay, you hey, definitely hey. missed uh I think this is my third hey, costume hey. change this episode. And boy, you missed a you missed, uh you're a lucky you missed it. What are you like, an hour four of this recording? <laughs> what, 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 what? I give or take. No. Yeah, we, we tend to go long. Yeah. You would never guess what, That's the no first time that any of you have been able to say that, Brad. So oh, there have oh, been many jokes about like uh time length, I guess I'll put it that way in this episode. So I'm glad you came here and hey man, oh, that's a that's again, a, that's not something you're used to hearing either, but besides <laughs> the point. <yeah. laughs> oh, oh that's <laughs> good. <laughs> What am I here for? What are we what are we talking about? We're talking about, about, about um, Damian Priest, surprise, Johnny guys. Gargano match from Halloween Happy. 2020. Oh, what are you, you um, special? You expect me to remember that. <laughs> so yeah. it was a pandemic match. Yes. It, it was for the uh mm. North American Championship. Yes. He was uh, he was heavily involved in the Orlando area at the yes. time of this. So yes. we have a question. Did you happen to go to any of the like uh CWC uh like COVID era NXT stuff. I think I went to one CWC show. I think we have a because we have a follow up question. What about like a Raw SmackDown during? They didn't have COVID. fans for those. The right. fake but crowd the noise game. was that pumped in like arena wise, quote quote, or was that like? No, I don't think so. I think that was only to the TV feed. All right. Hey, you just answered one. Of I went to several. We talking. I went to several AEW tapings during the pandemic. Daily's place. Yes. I probably went to 10 plus shows at Daily's place. And how were it's those? It's a great wrestling venue. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to Rampage this Friday in Jacksonville. There you go. Yeah, that's no, a, a great wrestling party. venue. Oh, um, how do you want to proceed, everyone? Because uh, this is such a nice, pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah, how do we get this coming on? <laughs> well, there you go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Mr. Right, Elbow, right. can you name one of your favorite Halloween Havoc matches? I think Ray and Eddie. It's top ah. of the list. Yeah, we did that we one last that week. match. Yeah. Huh? No, we're kidding. Give we love it. We, we, we know we did that last week. <laughs> give, us, give us one that everybody don't know. Mm. Off the top of my head? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, let me hit the Google machine real quick here because I think I've got one in mind. I just want to make sure I'm talking about the I right show. One. Yeah, what do you got? Hogan Sting, 99. Hogan Sting. Goldberg and DDP is not a bad match at 98. Yeah, true. That's a good one. Yeah. You know that uh, Mike's the biggest Goldberg fan of everyone here. He is. Mark. He's, the only he's, Goldberg got, a, he's got his here. autograph tattooed on his ass. I'd, just, I'd say it's one of the stronger Goldberg matches, uh, which doesn't say a whole lot, but I, I thought Dallas did a good job at kind of leading him through that. Yeah, it is. Very true. What are you drinking tonight, John? Uh, this would be water, but now that I'm on with you guys, I guess we got to break out the big game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Definitely oh, man, no shot glass for that fella. <laughs> right? <laughs> nope. So, uh, getting to this match, um, Damian Priest, he, he was really physical in this match. At the beginning of the match, he put Johnny Gargano right through the table. You know, in, in this, uh, the stipulations of this match were no disqualification and false count anywhere. So this was a very, very physical match. And they called it a devil's playground match. It does, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything except that it was... Well, they call it... Down. They call it... So officially, what it's called is a... Hold on, let me... Uh, give me a second. A spin the wheel. Make the deal. Devil's playground match for the NXT North American Championship. Sorry. As long as Shotzi calling us and telling us that what it is, is, it can be whatever match it wants to be. So uh, I guess, uh, John, a question for you is, what do you think of uh, Johnny Gargano as a heel, working as a heel? Would you rather see him as a baby face? That's what we were just yeah, talking Yeah, I'd rather see him as a baby face, but he's not a bad heel at all. I, I didn't love the way they, no pun intended, they found their way with it along the way. But um, <clears throat> initially, I, I wasn't super into it. He's a naturally likable guy. So him being a heel doesn't totally resonate with me. But those are some of the biggest challenges for some guys because when you are a natural babyface and you challenge yourself to play heel, sometimes you get the best results. See what happened with Sami Zayn and what he was able to accomplish as a heel. Um, but 
Uh, there you go. Honorary use. So my Halloween costume. Yeah, oh, I thought you just stepping outside was your Halloween costume. But I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, honestly, I, I think that I would prefer Johnny as a baby face because he works better in the comeback rather than doing the shine. Like the but underdog. Yeah. yeah. And does he perform better as a baby face? Like with the, um, like you said, the resiliency and the athleticism. Yeah. Does, he, does he hold back a little bit as being a heel? I think when you are a consummate baby face and you change up to become a heel, you, you do have to learn how to lean or not lean into some of the things that made you so successful as a performer, like Johnny Gargano's comebacks. You're not going to have that as a heel. And, you know, Johnny's a smaller guy. So as a heel, you have to believe that he can beat the crap out of somebody. So when he's on offense getting that heat, I don't know if I love that dynamic with him as much as I do when he's a baby face. I think he's like one of the greatest baby faces ever. Really. I kind of Rey Mysterio. Think. It'd be weird if Rey Mysterio tried to do heel. Yeah. He, he's, he's promoted as that underdog that, that never sure. die. The, the all heart. For sure. Yes. Uh, I, I did like the way. I, I mean, it was like, again, pandemic time. So we were heavy on story, a little lighter on wrestling back then. So I did enjoy it. But so at this time, though, uh, Damian Priest is actually 38 years old. Do you think that's a little what? too young to be in NXT at that age? A little too young? Or old, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so starstruck. I'm so starstruck, you know? <laughs> Samoa, Joe was, Samoa Joe was in his later 30s when he was in NXT. I, I mean, I think Damian Priest had all the pieces that you'd want in a guy that could be a player on the main roster. They probably just wanted to make sure they could get rid of some of those ring of honor habits that he came in with. And he's a monster factory guy. So they probably wanted to take some of those habits that they didn't necessarily like, make sure, Hey, this is how we do it in the WWE system. And that's why he really wasn't there that long. He was there. What a year about that. Yeah. Yeah, He uh, moved up three months after this. So yeah, I think that's probably why he was there. By the way, uh, John, we wanted to tell you that we all love the 30 year macho. Thank you. Appreciate that. Fantastic. We worked, we worked very hard on that episode and getting Undertaker to show up was a uh, pretty big coup. So we were happy with that one. So I'm yeah, glad you guys appreciate make, it. Make, he doesn't just make so appearances good, for everybody. Conrad couldn't even do that. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that's Undertaker's first ad-free shows appearance, isn't it? Oh, you, yeah. You didn't mention ad-free shows though, right? Did I mention ad-free shows to... Undertaker. Uh, to take it no i didn't but i mean they know they know what the hardy show yeah. is and where it is and all that so hey he was there for matt right that's what he was there for well yeah. john alba you're our undertaker so that's grossly misstated grossly but <laughs> <laughs> i mean like uh, that that level that caliber I, yeah, uh, just I, shut the hell up <laughs> i'm flattered but uh boy howdy i, I don't know about that john alba's our john alba leave him alone Boom, That's right. there it is there you go I tell, we tell the story on here john about how you ran into all of us at the at the restaurant on top guy weekend oh, worst day of my life <laughs> and you have your head down but we constantly say if you really wanted to avoid us maybe he shouldn't go to the restaurants connected to the hotel <laughs> yeah it was more out of necessity rather than uh desire but I, I had a good time, mainly because I got to meet Uncle Rai's, uh dad and shit all over him. So that was that was the main reason. Behind Dad's that. over, man. People love oh, yeah. my dad. Big, like big I think because that's a funny thing is the leading in question was like, you bring your dad again this year? I'm like, OK, so fuck me. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, yeah, they're all like, your dad, your dad, go, your dad, go. It was a good time. We had a good oh. time. I, I really enjoyed getting to spend some time with you all and i'm appreciative of all your support i'm appreciative of you guys let me crash your little kick out crew podcast here it's a lot of fun why does it gotta be a little kick out crew podcast why does it gotta be a little one i mean again i'm going off just i'm taking some i'm I'm making some estimates here and i'm hey man we get like a million and a half downloads like a week man we're like oh wow really now we're like 32nd in canada when did you wake up we are 32nd in canada (laughs) shout out by the way (laughs) I mean, hey, that's kind sure. of a big deal. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. But we know you're a free agent, and the guys have talked about it, and we'd like to throw you an offer. We are going to uh, offer you to come on our show, five hot dogs and a bottle of Jameson 
for every show you come on. How did that sound? Diet Coke. Two, two Diet Cokes. Come on, let's not, let's not low. Five hot dogs, Adam. I'm not really a soda guy. Yeah, that's why I said Jameson. Jameson, definitely. That's, that's good. And caramel. Yeah, that's, that's how we do it. We know that, uh, you know who it is. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean. We're right on level with Fightful. I know you were on <laughs> Fightful last night. I mean, the fact that he has to think about this makes me feel better already. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ellison, I want to make this very clear. I can be bought. There's no doubt about that. I certainly can be bought. Um, I'll, so I'll take it to my is, it, is this a pennies on the dollar situation? Oh, there is because... a chance. You're saying there is a chance. <laughs> there's there's a chance. I'll take it to my agent. We'll see how things go on that front. You know what? I'm just going to say this, Elba, just because you know what? I like you. Two cases of ramen. We'll do two cases of ramen. Wow. Dude, Boy, I don't even get really... two cases of ramen. Wait a minute. Whoa. Hey, really, man. Really, really splurge in there. Well, I mean, we're not sponsored, so, you know, this is a... It's like well, the we can't be sponsored too. by the cold, stuff. refreshing taste of natural light. Mm, that is natural light. If you are looking for, uh, you know, if you're dying of thirst, choose water or something. But if, you know, go with natural light. I'm just glad you get your Devin own t-shirt too, fucking... John Alba. You get your own kick out crew t-shirt. Devin, do you have anything you want to push? Any kind of product that you want to push? If you say semi Gavar, you're uh, out, you're out of the crew. I got a Mike's Hard Lemonade. Come next on, to me. dude. Well, of all fucking weeks. So you'll have one this week? That, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> He chimed no. in. He was like, "Man, I didn't, I didn't get any natural hey, Pepsi." Those Mike's <laughs> Hearts are like loaded with booze. Like the tall, the taller ones like that yeah, are loaded yeah. with booze. That's These not the only hard thing he'll be he'll be getting tonight anyway. I hope I saw, it is. I Devin's gonna clip Beyonce. that part and good. fucking like run it every morning he wakes up. Like Alba's compliment. Like it's gonna be a good day. <laughs> Real quick, uh, John, I want to ask you though, your girl Willow Night and Girl. How proud of you are are you of her? Willow, she's the best. I mean, I've thought from the first time I saw Willow that she could be a major player for any company. And I think you're starting to see that with AEW. I hope that we get that Willow is all elite graphic real soon because she's a consummate baby face. You can't not root for her. And I, that was one of my favorite interviews I ever did for ad free shows. So I hope that that translates for her and she can find some success because she's been killing it. Well, everybody that's been on one and one on one was a success. Look at your boy, Daniel Garcia. For real. I didn't even know who he was until you mentioned it, you know, like back in the day or back in the beginning. And I'm like, oh, look at him now. John, I really love that one on one with the independent wrestlers. I love that so much. because The thing with the Willow Nightingale to me, I I told you this story, but I'll tell it here that I was I was at an MLW show. And she just wrestled, uh, I think, someone else that you interviewed one-on-one. Ashley uh, Box. Yes. They mm-hmm. were in line at the concession stand at the old a- um, ECW arena, just waiting in line behind the fans for their, to buy the food. They're just standing there in line, like, mi- mixing with all the losers like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I don't know. This is, she holds a special place in my heart for that because yeah. she she's climbing her way to the top. You yeah. know, and uh, I... I that was just one of those moments. I, I told my son, I go, this is something that she's going to be a star. And now yeah. look, she's winning trios matches. Yeah. I think she's going to be a star too. And I really hope that eventually she gets that contract and that they position her in a way where she can lead a division. I really believe she can lead a division. Yeah, for sure. Mike, what are you going to ask uh, John Alba here? You know, you've been pretty, pretty quiet. I've been asking questions. He's starstruck. <laughs> yeah. It's John. Well, I, I don't, I don't mind putting Mr. Alba over. Because when we met in Nashville, every time he saw me, he made he made sure to say hi. He stopped and chatted. He didn't avoid nobody. He was probably the MVP well, now, for hold me. Hold on. I Nashville. don't know about avoiding nobody. There's well, so many that I saw. We had a good conversation. We, we you know, we talked. I can think of one or two people. And you made sure to say hi. And for sure. I always mentioned to get a picture together. So anytime, anytime you said hello, you were very cordial. You, you didn't rush us. Even before the Matt Hardy, um, before the stage show with Matt Hardy, you come down and chatted with us. You told us how much you appreciated it. That really meant a lot with me. So that that's your you're my number one guy. I appreciate that, yeah. brother. And I mean, and it, it, and it it stuff you do with like Top Guy Tuesday and all that. That stuff is amazing. Thank you. No, I yeah. appreciate that, guys. It's I mean, uh, a labor of love for sure. Now we got to get the wise wrestling back on. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. What the hell? <laughs> First off, I didn't want to listen to it. I didn't want to listen to it. And then I had to. 
And then I really had to, and then it's gone. And I find out a top guy or top guy weekend. I'm like, sitting at the table with you. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I'm the asshole. I miss my Kim Morton accent. I miss the accent. I know. I, know. I miss my Kim Morton. And I thought I was gonna hate her. And I love her. It's the best. <laughs> I I miss doing that show greatly. But did they make you say stop saying make it a big one? No. Well, because it was like one dick, make it a big one, one dick, make it a big one, and then it ended. Did it? Yeah. I, I looked I forward doing... to it for some reason. I don't I, know why. I'm sure you did. Uh, I just. Why is that the only part you remember, Brad? I know, right? <laughs> uh, no, I miss doing that show tremendously. So, yeah, it's a bummer. No is it, uh, it. Nope. Um, I don't want to give you any. If it's uh, you can't say it, don't. But is there any chance it's coming back? Or I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's a decision above my head. Well, you're still above Stay us tuned. in the ratings, uh, even with the show not being on anymore. So congratulations on well, that. I, I will write that. a strongly worded letter to whoever I need to to get it back. No, I just, you know, with that show, I, I'm a strong believer that in order to stand out, you got to be different, right? So um, I just feel like when you can offer something that doesn't exist in the space already, then that's... A plus material, right? I felt it was so organized in a in a like an unorganized way. Like I know yeah. I I could feel that you had it planned right. Like you had the swear jar, which is a, a big part of the show. You had the John Cena quote, which was a big part of the show. You had your openings. You had your your topic, and, and it's just the way you tied it all in. It was like planned chaos. Yeah, it it's was true. Very, it's true. The RK no, all of it. Yes, RK I just no thought, it, stuff. I thought so it was good. a very wholesome show. Like it was totally not wholesome, but I also thought simultaneously it was really wholesome. No, it like, was. It, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like that. Like you would come me away. That wrestlers and their families are just real people, just like right. Us. Exactly. Exactly. So that was definitely. Um, that was definitely a big thing for me. I'm, I mean, I, the whole I, story I about the way Kim Wharton met him is bizarre shoot it's your shot so, man like she was a fan for two years or three years and then just met him at a convention or at a wrestling match whatever it was. yeah she and shot then, her shot she said i'm and, gonna marry that guy and he came up to her and here they are i mean she's smoking hot that helped <laughs> lucky bastard <laughs> that's what i gotta do with alexa bliss right there no comment <laughs> been talking about alexa yeah, bliss for, for, for a while so he also likes the other one too, Liv Morgan. He's, oh, yeah. he's got a type. A Jersey girl. <laughs> yeah, this freaking Southern bastard wants these Jersey girls. Mm -hmm. Brad, I think. Uh, York, I'm sorry. You just can't beat the Brad, New York. I think I'm gonna be. I think I'm gonna be wrestling a match at the Monster Factory soon. So you okay. definitely should come on out over to that. Definitely. When, uh, is that in Philadelphia area? I'll get in the ring yeah. with you. Let's go. It's about, about 15 an hour minutes outside Philly. Is that all it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've never been there. I've it's in Jersey. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I go to Jersey plenty. <laughs> this guy, freaking James Elkright. You can't talk about Jersey or Philly without him throwing up inside of his Giants mouth. and Eagles, man. Come on now. It's, <laughs> it's fucking uh, fall. It's a great place to live, James. A great place uh, yeah. to live. Yeah. Look at the representation it has. Fucking Here, superb. Alpha get in the ring makes me want to get back in the ring now. There you go. Maybe I should get back. Well, I'm out of shape. Alba's building dreams right here. You know what I'm saying? Change hey, your lives, Alba. Change your I'm putting lives. stars over. If Sometimes I had a you... hair like Alba's, I'd be in the business 100%. <laughs> you need he to be a star to stars. put stars over, you know? To have hair like Alba's, true. I got to buy it. Again, we can't it's have true. that. It's true. <laughs> yeah, size sparkly or whatever the bullshit was. John, are you a GCW fan? I, if this is a hard question, I can, I can ask another. <laughs> I think his microphone's muted. Maybe we should ask another. Relative? <laughs> How about this? How about I switch up the question? Is there any reason why they're not at the ECW arena? Um, have they never run the ECW they're, arena? They're always in Atlantic City. At the, They've at ran the, it uh, once or twice as a specialty boat, deal. Which I've been to. Yeah. No, no I, I enjoy GCW. I, I don't enjoy all GCW things, but... You know, I mean, you guys know I love Effie. Uh, my my interview I did with Effie for Effie shows might be my favorite interview. Fucking awesome! That was he's really so great. Right. Effie's so great. Oh, that was I good. Love oh, he's I so good. Able to go to that I didn't even have to ask questions. He just went off. <laughs> just uh, that was amazing. Um, I can't believe that was almost a year ago. Holy crap! Wow. Um, yeah. Effie and Atlas. What, what was the name? Atlas come from NXT. Um, yeah. Don't, what, oh, Jake, Jake, Jake Atlas. Atlas. Jake Atlas. Yeah. Effie and Jake Atlas had the best match. They beat the piss out of each other. 
And it was so amazing. It was such a good match. It was in Chicago last year. Yeah. He, uh, Jake Atlas had some legal issues recently. I think that's why he's gone right now. But um, yeah, Effie's, uh, Effie's a great performer. He's a great performer. And he's done a lot for wrestling and giving representation to the LGBTQ community. And I think that's awesome. So um, he's, Effie's over with me. No doubt about that. Yeah, they had that whole uh, month on uh, Busted Open where they went through um, that, you know, everybody, you know, that's in that community. And I thought that he was really a great part of it as well. Yeah. So um, are we going to do this match anymore? Because I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean, mean to doesn't know it's going to be guys. weird to be like, hey, what did you think about that what, clothesline? What, what, <laughs> match, what match are you talking about? Well, let's sum it up like this. Let's bring closure to it. What did you guys think of Gargano winning the title? I figured it was coming because I figured Priest was about to move up anyway because he didn't belong in NXT. I mean, I mean he, he was awesome. He, he's just who smashed him over the head. Daniel I know who Priest it was. was awesome. Me and Devin know who it was. It's not, we know who Ghostface was. Go ahead, Devin, answer it. It is the future youngest Mr. Money in the Bank of all time. Austin Theory. Uh, there's your heel right there. That's, that's 100% a heel. it was him. And I loved Austin Theory in the way. Because he played that dumb, like, like he I was love dumb, him right? now. Him <laughs> now is awesome. He was a heel, but he was like that, like he didn't know any better, you know. And I thought he was pretty funny. He's oh, a future star. Yeah, and he would have to like, cut off Christmas sweater, <laughs> like ugly Christmas sweater. I didn't watch his arms out. It was good. <laughs> Listen, I, should, I go back. I don't even hate. I don't even hate 2.0. I don't. I thought it was all watchable at the very least. Gosh, I've seen a lot worse wrestling. Jeez. Right now, Alba's texting. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm with hey, these He's busy, man. Right this now, is made on the move. But I will be I'm there. By his agent. Agent. Trying to make business moves here, boys. He, he's talking <laughs> to his agent about getting this show over for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about my kickout crew contract. That's right. Whatever you do, don't listen. <laughs> Don't go I'm to like, they want to this. They want two <laughs> bottles of Jameson and Diet That's Coke. A <laughs> He's talking to his agent. That's right. Um, no, I, 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 again, as far as the way is concerned, it wasn't really my cup of tea. The ghost face stuff, I, I, that was just a weird era of NXT. It was a really weird era. Pandemic, man. It was, a, it yeah. was all strange. We were talking about, I wonder how this is going to age moving forward. Yeah. Like, let's say 10, 15, 20 years from now, even younger kids, you know, like, oh, let's watch something from uh, the 2020s. He's like, yeah. Why are there monitors everywhere? Uh, you know? I felt 2020, <laughs> 2021 NXT was just really weird. And uh, I don't know. Once once the Aleister Blacks and the Ricochets left NXT, I feel like there was a noticeable decline in the product of NXT. But do you think they could have had the power to build certain other people? Like after, obviously, with the rollover, you know. They could have, but go. they felt like they had to go head to head with AEW. And that but then the, the, the pandemic thing NXT. happens too. So. As sure, you're the trying pandemic to build happens. these like no name people, I understand that the pandemic you know, happens, but yeah. I think it was more of the AEW stuff that really threw off the working formula for NXT. Yeah, I want to say one more thing about this match though. We talked about the pumped in crowd noise that we thought was okay because there wasn't anybody in the crowd, but what did you guys think about the pumped in booze for Johnny Gargano? I okay, mean, they, they had um, laugh tracks on, on sitcoms in the 80s. I mean, it's just an extension of that. They want in the to try 90s, advance the storyline. Terrible show. Hey, this guy with friends. He wants to give us some kind of reaction. <laughs> right. Here's my point about this Johnny booing. Nobody booed him like that. Okay. <laughs> like, even though he, he wasn't was a believable heel, heel, I mean, he was decent. He had, he he had fans. You didn't have everybody booing Johnny at once like that. They still cheered him. Like, he was one of those. Uh, he like was a face for punk. so long. It was hard to, it was hard to boo him. When he was a face for four years, and then That's when he had that awesome, uh, when he was against Champa for all them years, mm -hmm. Champa was heel. So that rivalry took took two years. So all that whole time they're cheering him, so it was just weird to boo him after they cheered him for three four years. As a as a non NXT watcher, I definitely knew the uh, the feud of uh, Champa and Gargano because that was like that was the thing that was you know kind of breaking over into the mainstream of the WWE thing was. Hey man, you should be watching NXT, you know. So to now see like, oh, but Gargano's a bad guy right here. Uh, it's you kind of revert back to you know him slamming uh, Champa slamming him in because that's what that's the only way I knew this. I never watched NXT, so the well, only I mean, way I knew Gargano was, oh yeah, Champa turned on him. 
I, I just think there's some heels that never go full heel. And I don't think Gargano was full heel. But when they pumped in those boos, I knew I knew it wasn't real because I know not everybody would be booing them. That's the way I felt. Yeah. But whatever. What do I know? Just an asshole with notes, huh? <laughs> we didn't even cover the Most commentators. Definitely. Good job, Most Richard. Definitely. Who were the commentators, James? Well, we had Bad News Barrett. We had Waldo. And then I didn't see what Beth Phoenix was wearing. Was Waldo she even there? Else. Oh, wait a minute. We're talking about, so are we talking about the kayfabe of the kayfabe of the good? Because they were in costume, but as other people in costume. So I guess I'll get to the. Beth Beth Phoenix is actually at home doing commentary at this point. Because gimmick names in costume, like, ah, you know, that's next level of fucking, uh, you know, wizardry there. But the people in those said costumes were Vic Joseph, Wade Barrett, and Beth Phoenix were on commentary. Very nice. Last week, uh, John, we covered. Um, it was Shivani and uh, who was Jesse. it, James? Jesse and the Body. Ventura. But they were both Jesse the Body Ventura. They were because uh, well, Jesse was the, was the Body was a gynecologist, if you remember. And yeah, Jesse was nothing. <laughs> like for yeah, he was pretty much himself in a white coat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> two two Jessies. It was uh, oh, the bro. Cactus Jack versus Vader match uh, mm-hmm. from 1993. So we have very strong opinions about that match. If you remember it, it was a Texas death match. Do you remember it? And if you do, what was your opinion on it? Fucking terrible. <laughs> I couldn't. Re- I, I'm sure I've seen it. I couldn't recall it off the top of my head. Well, let's just say this. The grave uh, thing. Do you remember the grave thing down the stairs? And, and, like he's putting put on the spot. That's hard. There's a million well, matches. But let's just say this. I've Melton seen a lot of well, hey, explain the rules in my to life. Him. So just explain Melton, the rules to I gotta him. Start with Melter. I got to start with Melter giving it four and three quarter stars. Okay, let's start there. But here are the rules. The rules are falls count anywhere, but falls don't count. After you get a fall, there is a 30-second break. After the 30-second break, you have 10 seconds to get up from the 30 seconds. I can't even it. was the shittiest, weirdest match ever. And he's not making that up because even Jesse the body was like, Somebody's got to go for a pin here. And then Shivani's like, well, you can't pin him. And then it's like, but you can pin him. But it's 30 seconds after that. And then 10 and then more, 10 seconds. more seconds. Oh, God. And at the Third end, when they said, they said shit won, show. And Vader won, both of them were on their feet fighting. Yeah, they were standing up brawling. Vader wins. <laughs> four, and, four and three quarter stars. I mean, yep. listen, I respect Meltzer's opinion about a lot of things because I think he does a great, I think he likes what he likes. But this is everything he hates. I can't figure out why he. I think there should have been like a negative four and three quarter. He just forgot the negative. <laughs> right. so I, I messaged him today and we we're still waiting to hear. You yeah, need yeah. to message Derek Sabato. Message him and he'll he'll get the answer to you. All right. <laughs> anyway, watch the match. It's uh, 15 no, minutes. No, don't. You'll no, we'll never don't get that time it. back. Do not watch that exactly match. You'll never get that time back. Me. You didn't exactly sell it to but me. Listen, that's the kind of stuff that's fun. You know, it's funny. Well, unless you're going to do like a parody watch along uh, type thing. be really funny. <laughs> Don't again, ever watch not, that match. We're not making fun of the competitors. It's not the competitors. It yeah, just, yeah, uh, no, it's not the talent, obviously. You're over Nick Foley's the in there. And Nick Patrick does a hell of a job counting to three and then standing uh, up, uh, counting to 30, and then standing up and doing another new count that counts to 10. 43 Why seconds not? Why the, the fuck show? not? You know? <laughs> yeah, I was never a big Nick Patrick guy. Nothing against him personally. Just as a referee, I... Never thought he was particularly very good. Yeah. The heel Nick Patrick, uh, I think, is where he shines the most. I heard your favorite match of all time is Earl Hebner versus Nick Patrick in Invasion. Well, <laughs> spoiler, who leaked that? Damn it. <laughs> well, hail. <laughs> <laughs> Another Texan. Love it. Sal. Uh, anyway, Gargano won. Yeah. Yes. He uh, oh. Somebody hit oh. Damian Priest with a tombstone. It broke. He flies off the stage. Then he gets pinned on the concrete. But they were in a graveyard, but he gets pinned on the concrete. You know, but whatever. So I do I have a Brian, I do have a Brian Pillman question from Brian Haremza. Brian Haremza, big fan of the show. If you guys would like to hear this, maybe you could help us with this, John, because I don't remember this. We did not watch this match, I promise you. Uh, does the crew think this – so, Brian, we watched Brian Pillman uh, versus – Luger. Bre- <laughs> not not Snake. Lex Luger. In 1989, baby. Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc 89. It's October. Does does the crew think this match or the match with Justin? So the crew think that match that we just said, 
or the match with Justin Liger, Justin, Justin, I'm sorry, was more of a Jesus racist man. Wow. Was more, <laughs> boy, I'm butchering this bad boy. Huh? Yeah. 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 Was more of a breakout match for Brian Pillman. So which one was a bigger breakout match? Jushin Liger or uh, or Lex Luger? I'd have Luger. to have more context, honestly. Yeah, that's true. It's got to be Jushin. Has to be. Do you Break think out so? as Luger Jushin. because you're expected to have a good match with Jushin Thunder Liger. You you don't know what Lex Luger is kind of a 50-50 toss up. So the fact that they had a good match is is more of a highlight to me because if you don't have a good match with Jushin Thunder Liger, something's wrong. But yeah, that, the more people like, two guys to Luger, that means you're doing something right. No, no, the two guys doing like their thing at a good level, I think promotes it better, especially domestically and internationally, than hey, Lex Luger, you know, like carried the ship, <laughs> you know. John, do you think uh, Lex Luger's underrated? <clears throat> I think Lex is probably appropriately rated. I think most people recognize that he had something special and that he had some spurts of really good runs. And then there were some times where he really didn't deliver on what he was supposed to be and could have been. I think he's probably appropriately rated. I thought this why do you match... think it was like that? Like, why do you think he did good in some spots and not good? I Cause... think his attitude at the time and just how he was and all that. Like, I mean, he's really mentally and personality and emotionally in a great place these days. But, you know, right. back then, things weren't as fluid in that sense. And I think that probably affected his performances. I agree. Uh, I thought this match that he had earlier that we watched with um, Brian Pillman was – I thought it was good on both sides. Uh, and I think sometimes his reputation of not being a good worker, people have a – like the preconceived notion that it's going to be a bad match. But you got to just take each match as it is. So this match I thought was good. I think most guys of the guys here think so too. I yeah, never saw seen some doozies for sure. <laughs> well, we love our coal miners uh, glove match for sure. With uh, Boy. With okay, Jake we're going to watch and we get to Jake watch that Jake back there. this Tuesday. Yeah. Jake and I actually, that's a, uh, is that Jake and Sting? Yes. Yeah. Jake in the wheel, so make the deal. We, we just taped an episode of DDP Snake Pit about Sting, and Jake talks about that match. So be on the lookout for that. Did he happen to mention if the wheel stopped at the wrong thing? He says it was a shoot, how it all went down. He says they tried to convince him of that. He's not convinced of that. But when we, uh, when the AFRI shows does the Zoom watch along, if you notice the wheel is going and going and kind of stops and like uh, rattles, and it's barely. Like uh, on the inside of Coal Miner's glove, the next one over was First Blood, and you can see Sting go, "What the fuck is that?" Like you just hear him screaming. So I kind of, I, I want to ask him, like, was it supposed to be a First Blood match, and it just kind of like stuck there? I think I yeah, asked him he, about it. I mean, he recognized that it sucked. So, <laughs> well, the best part of that match is you don't need the glove to win, <laughs> right? <laughs> Again, a, like an over explanation of the rules that don't matter. <laughs> and I, I wonder do, if somebody I do have one like, question. Oh, how, how long do we have you for, Mr. Alba? I got a few more minutes with you guys here. Oh, I got to know how you feel about dad jokes. About dad jokes? Dad yeah. Jokes, yeah. We have a segment on the show. What's waka, waka, waka. This is a. I, I mean, you know, I love me some Fozzie Bear, but. Uh, I don't know. Very good. Hey, this is uh, this is actually one of the more popular <laughs> things that we do is the uh, Adam's dad jokes. All right, I've only got two him. good ones. I, 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 I thought I knew you were coming on. I did four. Let's hear them. Such an asshole. I bet you none of them are mine, are they? I did yours last week after a fall. Yeah, we need you to laugh for half the episode, Mike. <laughs> All right, so it what did the funny. duck say when when the duck bought chapstick? What the duck say? Yeah, what did the duck say when he bought chapstick? I don't know. Oh, put it on my bill. <laughs> there it is. Waka, waka, waka. Hey, let's pump in some crowd noise for that. Yeah, for I'll do I'll add it in post. I'll add hey, it in what's, post. What's, what's the second one? Uh, so yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I couldn't figure out if someone was waving at me or the person behind me. Uh, in other news, I lost my life garden job. Terrible. <laughs> Now we go to boo. We'll <laughs> no, I'll we'll say this, Adam. Those jokes aren't half bad. They're all bad. Okay. Yeah. Oh. As long as I'm consistent, I'm good. As long as I'm consistent. 
Well, there you go. There's a little judge walk off right there, man. That was a that was a good one. Okay, Not like John, you know a thing or two. Yeah. For our uh, well, well, you gave us a good one, we'll Mr. Robbie. How how can we help you? Uh, what do you got to promote, John, for our 200 fans? Yeah, man, shill something. That's 200 on Podbean, pal. That's not okay. the <laughs> Hey, shill something to people who don't We are 30 second you, in Canada. Don't forget. Do they I'm count sure all we the all, know all of the 200 fans? Do they count all the times that James hits refresh? Yeah, I that. hope not. <laughs> I don't. Uh, if He's you, awfully quiet. If how many think, times uh, you stopped the recording? I, if you think I put that much work into this. That's true. That's You've a, never worked that hard in your life. That's, 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 that's a, fair. That is I appreciate the, the compliment, yeah. man. <laughs> no, I mean, look, you know, I host the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy dropping every Friday, host of DDP Snake Pit. I think I'm the host of that. I don't know. I think I am, though. Um, and uh, some miscellaneous other stuff going on around the pro wrestling world. And I'm I'll, I'll, here. You guys want to hear you? I'll, I'll break some news on your podcast. I'm going to be launching a... Uh, uh sports parody podcast coming up soon on a network called know your news and it's gonna be called out of bounds and it's gonna be with my friend mia o'brien who's a jacksonville sportscaster and uh we're gonna be looking at the lighthearted stories in sports and having some fun with that so uh, that's, see, now we're that's gonna be launching cool. soon and in 10 that's seconds great. tell us about your new school because i think that's really cool how yeah, you're uh, using your launch, expertise to help people launching a coaching service it should be off the ground hopefully by the end of the month where people who want to you know, tailor their on-air skills or <laughs> learn James. how to do more editorial stuff they can talk to me and i'll consult and i'll peer review and hopefully help them get a little stronger with their skill set so that's the alba media school and that's going to be launching at the end of the month I've already signed up. Yes, you did. Well, you oh, signed shit, up for the free. All right. You signed up for the free email list. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been live. When yeah. I roll yeah. out the for price the email, tiers, but we'll then see. I'll sign up. When I roll out the price tiers, then we'll see if Devin's still uh, still yeah, on board. Yeah, with that. For <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Well, thanks well, for coming on, John. Yeah, Definitely. John, thank you so much for popping in. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you guys for all your support. I appreciate you guys, even if it seems like I don't. I do. And you guys are all good people so uh yeah. i leave Let you me know with about this. the monster factory yeah you got to come out there i, I yeah. leave you with this don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things so <laughs> noted you should have told me that three months ago i know <laughs> i know i'll see you guys later see you, john. Thanks, john. thanks for being on john how fucking cool was that thanks coach so much for that that's it. Yeah, that cool. and that's so, the show. Thanks for coming on the kick up because we can't top that. I need the meat that, in it though. That's crazy because yeah, well, I just we, I just confirmed a future guest. So I'm, uh, just I'm gonna do I'm doing something that I, I off the I'm not doing what I said. I'm doing something else. You off the cuff? I, I want to because I'm up, right? We really should have done an FMK right there. We I didn't, didn't do, do the that now. Uh, we didn't do the listener yeah, questions. Been. Yeah, we did. What what do our listeners have to say about this second match? Or did you already go through no, that? No, I, I got it. It's just oh, the one okay, question. Those are the ones? It was just the one question, and I did the Liger one, yeah, too. Yeah, the match okay. that we covered so detailedly. So I, um, I'm going to do a Would You Rather, because okay. uh, I didn't like what I did there with I the fake that. stories, because they're stupid. So, Would You Rather. They are fake news. Would you rather stay the, stay the age you are physically forever, or... Stay the way you are financially forever. How, James? Let's start with you. This is an asshole thing to do, Brad. Was it? Is this a backwards way of you saying intervention right now? <laughs> is this really what we're? Hey, James, you want to stay fat or broke? Pick one. Like, thanks. Uh, well, okay, is this my intervention? <laughs> is, is there a counselor about to walk in? <laughs> James, can you take a seat on the couch, please? You know, we all love you. We all really <laughs> care about you. <laughs> what a fucking asshole this segment is. Oh my what a God. dick. What a dick. Oh, I, I'm going to change it up. It's going to be intervention of James. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Like, you guys actually think I put that much thought in this. You're crazy. What a guy. What a fucking <laughs> class act this dude is. I'm going to switch it up. I see. And this is a, this is how intervention start. I read this outline. Go, oh, you make a little typo with Adam and Mike's name. You get me on the on the Fritz, and then you come in with this. James, we really care. About you. Well, this is how it starts. The whole Adam and Mike thing with the double name was a ruse. What a piece of shit. You know, you real. How do you sleep at night? 
I don't know, man, but I didn't plan that. What a mother. Hey, hey, James, you want to be fat or broke the rest of your life? Get it together. Like, that's what Okay, can you answer the fucking question now that you can <laughs> think about it? Holy I think shit. about it. I am offended. I, I agree. How about you, Mike? Fuck out of here. You don't get offended. <laughs> well, I'd rather be my physical fit. I, yeah, I think that's yeah, the answer. Yeah, you lean, you know, <laughs> lean people. You're asking yeah. all these skinny guys, hey, would you rather be <laughs> I, I wake up, I'm sore a little bit here and there, but, you know, fuck it. I can Financial would be my question or answer, I guess. Yeah. I could always use a couple more dollars in my bank account. Well, How for sure, you? but I mean, like, financially, I did just get promoted, so I'm probably making the most <laughs> money I've ever made, so I guess financially. Still How broke, though, ass, but, yeah. What do you, what do you think, Coach? Oh, I'm definitely taking the financial. Perfect. How about you, Devin? Uh, I'm taking physical. Hopefully, I'll you be making more specimen. money than wow. I make right now. So wow. Wow. Uh, how about you, Adam? I mean, is it not obvious? Yes. Yeah. Physical. I'd rather stay good looking like I am now. Oh, man. I need to write this for when I do the thing, like. Something some James and intervention something that should be. I don't I need play. money. I I can talk. I can talk the women down and get my own money. My goodness. Yeah, you know, for me, this is a difficult question. I'm going to tell you why. When you're in my line of work, it can go really well. Hmm. And it can go really not well, and I mean really not well. Nothing's when guaranteed a, in the sales world. When you're hmm. when you have a car shortage, <laughs> things are a little different than when things are rocking and rolling, or when so people can't leave their house for a year and a half. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Right. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my 5'8", 150 pound body is good enough for me right now. My goodness. I might be 155 now. I've had some beer this week. I didn't work out this week. You know, still. I'll, you I'll do have honest. a fresh fade, though. You got a good haircut. <laughs> so uh, next one. Would you rather be part of a zombie apocalypse or a robot apocalypse? Ooh, zombie. 100%. Why, no, why, why the fuck are you answering that so quick? Hold wait, on, wait, hold when, on. You, when you, when you say <laughs> be a part of... Mike's ready. Let me show you my Where's zombie preparedness kit. I got what, all what you know? you know? When you say be a part of, what do you mean, like, to be a part of it? Here comes well, the second amendment. So basically, you're okay. in the apocalypse. You're not Look either. This. Okay? So, so if I had to fight against it... Yeah. You got to combat it. Is that the Negan bat? Negan? Yeah, that's a Negan bat. Oh, man. Hey, did you ever get that t-shirt I never sent you? Yeah, the Negan no, All Stars one. I do love yeah, Negan. Never got Negan it. is so the I'm best player right here. For five years. That's all I need. So, Mike, funny story. When the, the, the pandemic started and people started going to the gun store like crazy, I I took oh, a I picture of that bat. True. I took a picture of that bat and said, "Are we coming to this?" So you're talking yeah, about dealing be. with said events. Yes, you're, not... the, you're us. We're still us. <laughs> we're okay, not yeah, well, we're not we're not on the team. <laughs> we're the getting attacked. <laughs> we're the ones. Yeah. Zombies yeah. all day, man. Robots are. You know, pretty precise yeah. and stuff. I, I don't deal with electronics too good, so. What robots do don't get to... tired, man. Robots don't get tired. Robots don't have drama. What about in the rain? I don't there know. There are waterproof, waterproof stuff <laughs> these days. <laughs> I mean, how about like rubber seals and like there's waterproof stuff these days. Yeah, my phone's waterproof. They're waterproof. Fuck that. I'm taking zombies. All right, I'm taking zombies too. How about you, Adam? Yeah, zombies all day because the South and robotics just don't get along. Hey, coach. Agreed. No, I'm taking the robots. I'll figure out a way to program them and have my own harem. You would. Mm. Devin D19. Uh, I was kind of thinking the same mm. thing as coach. That like, I work at programming all day. I might be able to like get them on my side. But... You'll be the first one they turn on, dude. Come on. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay. So hey, we have robots. We're going to Devin's. We got zombies. You can go to us. Rednecks over here. Damn right. <laughs> Bang, bang, bang. All right, one more, guys, and then I'm done. Would you rather buy all used underwear or all used toothbrushes? Back to you, James. What the fuck is this? <laughs> it's gross either way, but how gross is it? What's gross? Like, I know my answer. I mean, la if laundry is part of the game plan, then I guess I'm going to wear someone's, you know, because you can wash the laundry, I guess. You can wash your toothbrush too, pal. Uh, mm, are you really uh you getting let me tell you something you know those utensils you use at the at the uh the restaurant they go in a dishwasher and they're in somebody's freaking mouth i know i've had a bunch of food jobs brad how dare you bring you had a bunch up. of what jobs what kind of food jobs? jobs oh okay i thought you said something else i have done a lot of food jobs applebee's chili's chicken places barbecue places like sandwich places 
had a lot of food jobs. And how dare you trash the food industry? Especially when I you imagine. take your especially when you take your wife out to eat on dates and oh hey James can't do a kickout crew zoom that we promoted. Gotta take my daughter out. She's in town. Well, how dare you? First of all, neither yeah. of us promoted that one. But that, <laughs> me or that you. is very true. <laughs> that was Devin. He couldn't be there. Yeah. And then Thanks, Devin comes in halfway through it. Hey, whoa, what y'all doing? I'm camping, guys. Hey, whoa, 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 what planet? Earth. Crazy. <laughs> So that's, a, that's a special pay-per-view <laughs> if laundry is optional then i'm thinking i'm gonna wash people's drawers and wear them i'm it's gonna be really you're gonna be hard unless it's a lady friend i'm hooking up with then i may use her to use toothbrush yeah this is gonna be zone. very hard pressed for me to put someone else's saliva in my mouth unless you know i'm drunk i'm good <laughs> what do you got there mike well i gotta go story for that one Oh God Almighty! So, no, it's I mean it's it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, back when I was young, <laughs> you know, my uh, my stepmom she would go to this place we, what we call Sharon and Karen. It's a thrift mm. store. You know, they have yeah. clothes, they have this, that, and everything else. And there was one time I was sitting there. Hang I, on, I, I feel like I got to do a disclaimer here. The views and comments of Mike doesn't necessarily reflect all of Southern people. True. So just because this happened to him doesn't mean I went through the same thing. So, yes, this isn't for all other people. This this happened to me. I will, uh, I will validate this, this is a little story that happened with me. Okay. So, I mean, we're going up. We, my daddy was the only one that worked. You know, we made by. Well, there's one time I said something about not wearing clothes from Sharon and Karen. I don't like wearing clothes. I was being a little stubborn ass. My stepmom looked at me dead in the eye and said, what do you think that underwear that's covering your balls are at? Right. So I got underwear from Sharon and Karen from somebody else. So I would have to say wear underwear from somebody This else. is just Brad's way of pointing out north-south shit. I think <laughs> yeah, all no, of us no, southern no. people. Take the Civil War, pal. But you know, <laughs> listen to this, though. Here, here's the best part about the little Sharon and Karen part. Okay. So my stepmom would go there. They were open three days a week. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, something like that. Typical South. Right? Yeah, Mother something like that. <laughs> so my stepmom would go, go there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. She would go there. She'd buy some. I mean, you got a pair of blue jeans for 50 cents, you know? And it's Yeah, they do the stuff, blue tag, right? the orange tag, and, you know, they do yeah, the blue yeah, tag yeah. specials. Supposedly, but I heard. There, there was many, many of times that she would take clothes there. Like, she would donate clothes. Here, you know, we're doing it clothes, stuff like that. And she'll go back and she'll buy some. There's no telling how many times she went and donated clothes and a month later bought back the same clothes. She that donated. is awesome. <laughs> I was hoping that story was going like, there. That is like she so would come back ass. in with her big bag of clothes from Sharon and Karen. You know. Oh my god, do you see this blouse? I'm gonna buy this. Like you ma'am, you brought this here last week. <laughs> By the way, Mike's still still in the story, but he froze, so he doesn't even know he's not on the air. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> I was hoping story, that story Mike. was <laughs> finally because I know me. I know a girl that used to shop at the uh, you know Goodwills and stuff like that, and I'm like, I wonder if she has bought her own shit, you know? Because oh, I got too many clothes, so donate them, and then like a little bit later, like oh my god, look at this! Because I would go with her sometimes, but she was really tiny. She's like skinny and stuff. So she would uh look at the uh like small mediums of uh like boy shirts and stuff or men shirt or whatever, but she gets some badass t-shirts. I'm like, motherfucker, you don't even know about that. No, like, she gets some sweet ass Power Ranger shirts, like all kinds of stuff. Uh, we Coach lost Ball. Mike. We lost Mike. So do you He'll have any back. answer? Toothbrushes or underwear? Well, let me give my answer just to show to give Mike a little uh perspective. Uh even on the West Coast, people grew up poor, Mike. And my mom, she was a great lady, but we only owned 10 pairs of underwear. She only did one. My dad and I were about the same waist size. So I don't know whose underwear I had growing up. Could have been mine. Could have been my dad's. So I'll take the used underwear. No problem there. All right. How about you, Devin? All right. So, yeah, I think it's pretty much the same thing everyone else has said. I'm not going to put someone's used toothbrush in my mouth. I uh, just, there's no way I'm doing that. You and Eric have shared toothbrushes, though. Yeah, but I'll, yeah, the question, I, I, 
Okay, the question wasn't Erica's toothbrushes. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I just random. wanted you to admit that on camera. It was against go specific ahead. here, De- De- Devin. Was yeah, go specific? ahead. <laughs> but, so the underwear, you can just, you know, pour in a bucket of bleach. Should have made, Should have made this during a zombie apocalypse. But anyway, it would have been <laughs> a little different with the underwear. Anyway, uh, Adam, I don't think we asked you. Uh, I'll, I'll put this to bed pretty quick. Um, the thrift stores around here, they sell underwear. They don't sell toothbrushes. So there you go. I'm going toothbrush because you know what? The mouth is the cleanest part of the whole body. Tongue. What? Hmm. Okay, <laughs> no. You know what's the dirtiest part? Your hands. How has everything spread with uh, this oral fixation and saliva and, you know. Listen, don't talk dirty to me, pal. Yeah, yeah. The mouth is the cleanest thing. We're not fucking dogs. Maybe in dogs, the mouth is the cleanest thing. But not. You run some water over that toothbrush, good as gold. You know you've done it by accident. Your paternity. So out. Charlie Sheen, you probably drank a spitter. You probably drank a spitter cup. Let's say <laughs> someone uh, with you know, whatever. Let's take Charlie Sheen. You know where I'm going with this. Oh yeah. He scrubs yeah. his to his gums, gets a little blood on there, gingivitis, and then you know like rinses it in. Like your turn, and you're gonna be like, hey, you know, I know that guy's uh, positive. Cool. I'll put it cool. that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, you know? how quick are we making this exchange, James? Because I didn't say that the you guy next said to on the used. underwear next to you. Like all of a sudden, hey, can I borrow those? You didn't say that. It's used. Doesn't mean it's used in the last 15 seconds. Whatever's on that toothbrush True. is gonna die. I, hey, you're you're right because I did bring up the laundry aspect. So it's not yeah, like somebody's just taking out drawers and be like, hey, go, James. Tons of bleach. <laughs> yeah. I'm just okay. I my apologies. I jumped the gun on this one. It is just kind of like sharing a bowl over here. Like <laughs> next. Anyway, is bowl he frozen of... again or is he just very still? He is. He's actually a mime. He uh, cosplays as a mime in his off time. All right. I think we're. I think he's, he's not frozen moving. and Probably. stoic. I think we had the rapture in Georgia, so it's, it's slowly progressing to you. Adam, mm. be ready. Well, anyway, guys, that was we'll fun. see him disappear in a second, too. Well, hey, you know, speaking of, uh, I don't know how to transition to this. We lost Mike again. Fun stuff. Speaking of, uh, you know, hey. how things are going and uh, let's, uh, how am I transitioning this? I don't really know. It's Hi, Devin's Devin. demographic. So, <laughs> Devin, let's, uh, what you got for the everybody? I don't know. I for my say. Devin's demographic this week. It is the biggest thing that I can think of in wrestling ever. Batista's well, dick? in the past. <laughs> <laughs> not physically biggest. <laughs> if you're talking about something that happened over a week ago, then maybe, uh, you know. I am. Okay. Bray Wyatt's back. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, what, oh. Hey, what did you think about how they used him on SmackDown? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> as recording, we haven't seen <laughs> yeah. that yet. <laughs> but, uh, I'm excited to see what they're going to use them as. Like, I'm excited for everything. We were talking a little bit earlier before we started recording about the like cobweb play. At He's the got the whole world. The whole aspect. And He's everything. got the it whole great. It was all, I think it was well done for sure. Yeah, it was. Because that was my thing. I was bitching and moaning before, and even I wanted to bring it up to Alba, but I thought it would not be timely. But hey, good thing Devin's talking about it. We all knew it was going to happen, and I badmouthed that like, hey, they should have kept it a surprise. They should have kept it a surprise. Hearing that crowd? Whatever. (laughs) You know, surprise or not, that crowd was fucking loud on TV. I mean, like, deafening loud. Well, they, you know, it's like they said that the, uh, the CM Punk was the worst kept secret in wrestling. So it was this. And yeah. they wanted it and they still wanted it. It was Both so fucking I won't, loud. I won't there. say it was that. I won't say it was that. That was unreal, but it was pretty good. It was so really top good. dollar from uh Hit Row. He said yeah, that I, backstage it was just deafening loud. Dude, that they were having dude. mess ups with like the PA and the microphones and everything just because the crowd was being so out out of it. Just out He took his mask off, like it's already at like a high decibel level. He takes his mask off and it got even higher. And I was like, okay, 
Well, my idea was like, oh, the crowd knows it's going to happen, so they may not. Mm, I was wrong on that one because it, it went even higher. And Pauly B was there, and he's like, dude, it was like deafening. Yeah, that's a good one. Good demographic, Devin. Oh, hey, Mike, Mike, can you join us? So what the fuck is yeah, going on, bro? I yeah, you're know. here. Can you not freeze again? Finish the story, damn it. We're three seconds try. past. I don't Who has better I'm internet sure. right now, Mike or uh, Rosie in episode one? Yeah, right now, apparently. I don't know what the fuck's going Go on. Go outside, get in your car, drive down the block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And that's a callback to the archives. But don't watch episode one or else you'll never watch another yeah. episode. Start, let's just start at three. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. Oh, we're right. You're in time for a meet minute. Oh, am I? Is it my meet minute? Well, we didn't talk about the... Uh, you know, everybody, did everybody get their demographic in? I think he talked. Well, I mean, yeah, like, I mean nobody, uh, you know, only me and you pretty much gave us feedback. Oh, I don't know. That's true. I, I didn't shut up. Did Chris, what do you think about any, Bray Wyatt? Uh, well, Bray Wyatt to me has a memorable night because I was at that, uh, whatever that uh, pay-per-view <laughs> was in Phoenix, uh, Elimination Chamber when he won the championship the first time. And I was the only one that had a sign with Bray Wyatt. I called that match. So Bray Wyatt's got a real special place in my heart. Uh, Bray Wyatt, I didn't say The Fiend. I didn't say anything else, but Bray Wyatt. That's the man. They mentioned that uh, on his comeback thing is that, uh, you know, that uh, Elimination Chamber, like, even though he was maybe the bad guy and kind of the, uh, like, lesser of the people, they gave him the, or, you know, maybe that was a Philly thing. No, no. They always it, give him the pop when he comes back. Like every time, praise the dude. Like feel face. We want to see him do something. And, you know, speaking of uh, like Brad's picture, you know, right now could be cobwebs next week because I don't literally like that little part of it. Is that them saying that that part of it is done? Because hmm? cobwebs oh, accumulate yeah. on stuff that's old hat. I he had never a, he had know. A regular. Get a regular face. He had, it took his regular face out with the lantern. There was yeah. no his. It wasn't his, the, the face on the lantern thing either. And then what did he uh, remove the mask? Was like I'm house. back or or I'm here. I did love the fun house though. I, I like really the did too. The, than the fiend. I like the build to the fiend more than the fiend. If that makes sense. If that makes uh, yeah, I like. A, I'm not saying the fun house was the coolest shit on TV, but the way that they built it and the way the character and then when the fiend thing like. They did a really good job, and then Vince just straight dropped the ball. So to see old Trips uh, bring it back, well, you know, bring Bray back, I guess. Really excited to see where it goes. What was the question? I mean, no, it was Devin's demographic. It's just about the theme. It's yeah, just about Devin's Bray. talking about something that is eight days ago. And, uh, you know, or no, it's, it's more still than eight new. days. 16 days ago. 27 yeah, like days ago. 60, whatever it was. What is it, November it's 1? still recent in wrestling, you know. In, in the wrestling world. Hopefully. Right. Or, yeah, it is, especially after SmackDown. Yeah, it was a hell of a job he did on there. Right. Yeah, good right. good character build. And did you – can you believe that insert name here joined in was insert name? And how about Alexa Bliss? Uh, I'm going to go out on the list. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing Bo Dallas joins him. What if it's Liv? <clears throat> it was definitely not Bo Dallas. But I'm not going to tell you who it was. Oh, you Mike don't want to bow me? I, was, I, heard I, Mike, I heard it was my. Actually, I saw Mike Rotunda there. And speaking of yeah, Bo sense. Leave, shout out to our boy Alex Ansel. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I heard from him about a, week, about a week or two ago. Yeah, I bought one of his shirts roughly a probably 10 days ago, by this give or take. Hey, by and, the way, quick shout Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, go on. Quick shout out to Cabana Man Dan again about the yes. shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees. There is a shirt on there. That is so fantastic. It says, uh, "No flip, no flips, all flops." Or what was it? No flop, flips, all. Uh, it's fan what is it? What is it, Adam? I'm fucking it up. All flops, no flips. <sighs> fucking a! I can't. And he's got one it. called the flip flop chop and everything. <laughs> it's blue. It, it's 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 so cool. I, I'm getting it. I'm telling you. And right you now. can check out Cabana Man Dan on Pro Wrestling Tees to find out what T-shirt. Whatever the Brad's talking, talking about, about right? Because <laughs> yeah. I am off. I am I cold medicine and, and freaking broken skulls. Not a good liver combination. <laughs> Kidneys uh, working overtime. Transition from that. 
Is right? the rapture, he's still gone. Is he getting the meat minute or what? Hey, Mike, are we going to eat some fucking meat or what? <laughs> this is like a per- This is like a Bray Wyatt moment here. You soak the fucking chicken! <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so I was trying to check my internet shit. It's uh, no flips, just flops. Yeah, no flips, no just flops. Just Fantastic. Flops. All right, so someone call Cabana Mike's, Man Dam. Y'all aren't even ready for me. You hot on me? I'm ready. We're ready, asshole. Okay. Let's do a <laughs> reverse sear New York strip. I thought you were going to do macaroni salad or something for your meat minute. Uh, He's out of chicken. <laughs> reverse sear. Oh, okay. I love reverse salad. sear. Okay. Yeah. So what you want to do with this, get your New York strip and put your seasons on it and get your grill on smoke low 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 temperature and i put mine on the you know every girl has a top side and it's low side so i always put mine on the low side let it go there for about 45 minutes you want to take it sit there and flip it in 20 minutes and stuff like that depending on how you like your steaks but you just want to get that smoke flavor in that steak while that's smoking you want to go ahead do your sides do some asparagus Get your little mushroom and onion sauteed. Get those ready for the steak. Get you another little side, mashed potatoes, whatever you want to do on it. Once you get your steak nice and smoked, you pull it off. Turn your grill all the way up, as high as you'll go. And once it gets as hot as it can go, sit there, throw it on there. Sear it. Sear it. You want to sear it. I like mine still moving. So I only throw mine on there for a minute or two, then I flip it. Do what you gotta do with if you like yours, you know, medium or well done. So sure Brad likes his well done. Yeah. No. But <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a medium rare man. Anyways, I like mine, <laughs> I like mine still rare, and so I, I like mine still moving. So I only throw it on awesome. there for about two minutes, flip it, pull it off. Has still nice, good little steak. Has a little bit of that smoke flavor on there. You're good so, to go. So, Mike, you like yours? Devin, you got a freeze frame. Oh, never mind. Hey, uh, Mike, some, uh, some, froze there for a second. You got a freeze frame there. So, Mike, you like yours? Uh, slap it on the ass, put it on the grill. Slap it one more That's time right. and take it off. That's right. Well, I had a lot of sex talk this episode. <laughs> a lot of sex talk. But, yeah, get you some damn stuff. Steamed asparagus on there, throw you some mashed taters or whatever you want on there. And have I have a time. question. This happens to me when I eat asparagus. Does any of your guys, when you eat asparagus, your pee stinks? Well, yeah, but who yes. no, but when I eat pineapples, it... hey, well, easy. All right, we're not going there. <laughs> no, you're right. I, I first off, I'm done with asparagus because you know it's an aphrodisiac too. So my wife would give it to me on Mondays because that was our night to hey, hey, hey. Well, but then after a while, I, I was choking this stuff down. And I That's when you eat pineapples. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Just give me an oyster. I don't even like those either. Bing cherries. Bing cherries. Oh, I love oysters. Monday is a crazy How about, night just, how about just Blue Chew, huh? What about Apple a way to Apple. rock in the week? Oh, a Monday night? That's awesome. Like, most Pine people are like, apples. oh, Saturdays we go out and, you know, you know let's have a couple drinks. It was, our, uh, it was our kid-free night, so. Monday night raw. There used to be that. To be that uh, <laughs> the jokes like, write themselves. Back in the good old days, there used to be like downstairs sex. <laughs> oh. Is that a code name or a pseudonym or something? It just meant we did it downstairs. <laughs> that couch is no longer with us. I think they call that doggy style, Brad. <laughs> I like that too. Uh, hey, mom and dad, thanks for watching. Yeah, <laughs> be sure to like and subscribe. And you can follow us on the you know, Twitter. <laughs> Picking the pineapples. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. I'm yeah, glad Mike. you knew where I was going with that. Yeah, we all started <laughs> talking about asparagus and pissing. Mike, where are we? Uh... That's good. That's Come on. Good. Oh, that was it. Asparagus I didn't and know piss. Southern guys ate asparagus, honestly. Oh, I love asparagus. I love my piss stinking. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems four. like it's about it doesn't that good. It doesn't feel that good that's, to begin with. That's right? why you got four baby mamas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there, I guess. oh, golden showers must be fun times. <laughs> but I anyway, ordered, uh, I just ordered a Cabana Man Dan shirt. So there you go. There you go. Ooh. Support the support the fam, Cabana Man Dan. Hopefully, I got the right size. Medium. 
That's what she. Nah. Medium. Well, and uh, I guess next on the uh, thing is, what are we doing next week? Well, I'm so glad we talked about Hogan King 99. What? I'm sure the outline's wrong again. Rogan Sting 99? Okay. I like Adam's thing. What do you got? Who? Uh, what, uh, what other are we doing, guys? So, hey, Brad. Uh, well, King Brad, of the Outline is probably wrong anyway. Boom. What's Two that? time. Mike? I said, you gave me a big void on that one. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, a three second match. <laughs> so, my oh. issue is. So, we're doing a Brad match? We're doing a Halloween theme. <laughs> and I know this person maybe didn't necessarily wrestle at Halloween Havoc. But we're gonna do Halloween and not at least cover one taker match. Perfect. Ooh, I don't know yeah. which one, but and that's just me freestyling because obviously oh, fans pick it, pick it right now. Uh, so, pick a spooky one. Oh, the one where he uh, well, that's buried the SummerSlam alive. Pick match, a but isn't that the one match. where he like he floats to heaven or whatever? He gets they bury the Undertaker and he floats yeah. to heaven. That's yeah, we'll spooky. That. I don't know. Yeah. And, and by the time, what are we doing? Or are we just? <laughs> we don't know. Is there, there any be... ha- Is there any women's matches for Halloween Havoc? Ah, see, thinking, thinking. That's what I like, but I'll tell you what. I, I, I want to pick one then. But I don't know if we can. No, nah, never mind. Because I don't know if we can get it. It's AEW. Who knows if we can get it? Never mind. So well, we'll there. have two matches next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gonna Twitter. be bangers, you know. Yeah, what's the difference anyway? They're listening. It really does. The day this yeah, comes right. out, they already we already know. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm actually say a hell something. of a woman's match right now. Before we started recording, I was actually gonna say something about this and completely forgot about it until I saw yeah. Brad's very accurate outline. I'm, I forgot to. Well, it looks like the tape machines are rolling, and we are desperately out of time. We're just getting <laughs> so, cold. Uh, I'm Brad at Yes Man Brad on Twitter. All right, go. There James. it is. <laughs> it's Adam underscore from underscore Bama. See y'all later. Evan B19. Top Guy Theater coming back soon. Thanks so much to John Alba for coming on today. Hey, at John Alba. And you can uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. And, hey, if you like what we're doing, be a friend, tell a friend. I mean, for all, you know, it is your show. And uh, And that being said, looks like we're kicking out pretty fast on this one. You know, we ain't getting pinned down. So, like we always say, hey, will I get you down? Just kick out it, too, because that's what we all do. We are all the kickout crew. Had a great time. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. Thanks. (laughs)